Good evening, football fans, and welcome to Bain Schaefer Buffalo Stadium. West Texas A&M welcomes Central Washington here tonight in a Lone Star Conference battle between the third and fourth place teams in the LSC. I'm Lucas Kinsey. Joining me is my broadcast partner, Bryce Sheets. Kent Johnson will be uh, down on the sidelines joining us shortly. Our Thunder Vision director for the broadcast tonight is Jacob Griffin, and we're excited to have you with us here in Canyon this evening. West Texas A&M, you know, Bryce, a couple weeks ago, they were riding some momentum. Uh, they were riding momentum going into last Saturday's road trip against Western Oregon. The Buffs had won two straight games. Uh, they had won against UT Permian Basin here. That was a great game yes. for homecoming uh, on a last-second field goal that they made. They beat Midwestern State handily on yeah. the road in Wichita Falls. So everything's going good. And just like a year ago in, <laughs> yeah. in Monmouth, Oregon, if we could just not make that trip yes. to, uh, up to Oregon. But the game was decided late in the fourth quarter. You know, WT led by a field goal going into the fourth quarter, but it was the Wolves who right. outscored WT 17 to nothing in the final period. They come away with a 27-13 conference win. Where does that leave the Buffs now? Well, the thing is, yeah, don't go to Monmouth, Oregon. And that's one thing. <laughs> Try to stay away from there as much as you can. But the other thing, too, you know, Hunter Hughes says it's never difficult for the team to get up to play here at home. And so that's what they got to do. They've got to come out tonight with uh, basically their pants on fire, so to speak. In sure. other words, get some momentum, get some early connections offensively, hopefully some nice defensive stops and some things along that line. The other thing, too, and we'll talk about later on as well, is the Buffs got to be able to transition from the first half to the second half. In yeah. other words, that's where they've struggled this year is in the second half, not only making stops but really generating offense. So that's going to be a key tonight. Can you generate not only at the beginning of the game, you know, they talk about in basketball, first five minutes, first five minutes, second half. Oh, yeah. You know, well, that's kind of the same thing here a little bit for football. We've got to get off to a good start tonight and then carry it over and coming out of the locker room at the half. Yeah, WT's 4-3 and three overall, but just 2-3 and three in Lone Star Conference play. Still four conference games, counting this one tonight. So the question again is, how are they going to respond? Now, we talked about Monmouth, Oregon. Yeah. Well, Central Washington uh, took on Western Oregon. They also lost uh, that game. So Western Oregon, the Wolves have a couple of big wins, but Central Washington had a big win last week at home right. against Midwestern State. So that puts the Wildcats just one game behind Angelo State and Texas A&M Kingsville. Those right. two teams play tonight. We'll keep uh, a close eye on that one for the Lone Star Conference race. But Central Washington's in a situation where they control their playoff chances, really, because they have remaining games, Bryce, tonight against WT, and then they still play Kingsville and Angelo State ahead on the schedule. Yeah, absolutely. And so, again, this is the first of their bottleneck. The thing for WT is the, the tougher part of WT's schedule was earlier in the year for Central Washington, now it's later in the season. Yeah, for Central Washington, uh, playing with a ton of confidence coming into tonight's game. And uh, we've seen this Central Washington team before. Yes. They're new They're new to the Lone Star Conference, yes. Bryce. But, yeah. uh, they, you know, they were actually preseason. They were picked ahead of WT, and, yeah. and we remember that. But uh, they have not uh, – they, they've come into the conference this season, and they haven't shied away from anybody. You know, and, and you look at their resume – their losses have been, uh, minus uh, one of them, have been against really good competition. Right, right. And uh, so, again, this we're expecting to see a pretty good team tonight. We really should. The thing is, Central Washington also will come out with a bit of a chip on their shoulder the last time WT played up there. Uh, that was when they were uh, uh, basically breaking the champagne bottles on a new stadium. They had yeah. a new state-of-the-art. They played at night. They had never had lights before, so they are playing at night at new turf, and they had remodeled and everything else. WT went up there and spoiled that home opener for them and um, so they, they, they remember that and they're yeah. going to talk about that in the locker room coming out tonight. We're expecting a great matchup here tonight yeah. between West Texas A&M and Central Washington. When we come back we'll go beyond the athlete with Kari Belmars. West Texas A&M is going to tangle with the Wildcats of Central Washington right here tonight on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. We know that egg producers don't quit at 5 p.m. We don't quit until the job's done either. Bankers hours don't apply at First United Bank because we believe egg lending isn't a nine to five job. While you're out working the fields or managing the herd, we're making sure your money is working too. 
Whether it's for livestock, land, or equipment, we're one of the most dominant ag lenders in the state and have been burning the midnight oil since 1907. First United Bank. We know ag lending. We know ag. I'm Kari Belmares, and welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Athlete. Today we're sitting down with Kix Farrell, who plays baseball for West Texas A&M University. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Glad to be here, honored. Yeah, perfect, here. great. Yeah. So, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you? Pretty good, pretty hey. good, great. So, you're the first ever baseball boy on the show. And I'll tell you, I hardly ever see baseball boys like mm. around campus, which I find strange. What keeps you so busy? We have a very strange practice schedule, I feel like. We have multiple practices throughout the day, morning hitting, defensive work, team practice, team weights, and then also in that time you've got to find time to get your own workout in. We have optional practice stuff we do, you know, and we can just kind of fly under everyone's radar. If we're on campus, we're in class. If we're not in class, we're eating or we're at the field. So. That's what keeps us busy. You don't have much spare time, do you? Not a whole lot. No. no. Oh, I guess sometimes that's a good thing. Oh, yeah. Sometimes. Keeps us out of trouble. Oh, definitely. <laughs> so you're from Memphis, Texas, right? I am. Panhandle boy. Yes, ma'am. So Memphis and Canyon, not too far away mm -hmm. from each other. Did you come to WT because um, it was just something that you wanted, or was it more so for baseball? I planned on going wherever I could get on the baseball team. I reached out to a few different schools when I was in high school, had a few options, talked to Coach Vanderberg the summer I graduated, he offered me a spot here and here I came. Took it? Mm -hmm. So I know that a lot of athletes tend to get burnt out of their sport and how long have you been playing baseball? I've been playing baseball for 20 years now, six years here at WT. That's a lot. Tell me, what keeps you passionate about the game? You know, I've seen a lot of people come in to WT and just at all levels burned out. Um, they come in, they do a year, they do a semester maybe really good players and they burn themselves out they just they don't love the grind they don't like the practice schedules and all that and they, they I guess they what I've always said they don't have the passion for it I've noticed I felt like I've always had a really strong passion for baseball something that started when I was really young mm -hmm. and I've always thought what makes me unique from everyone else is I love to practice as much as I love to go play you know practice day is as fun as game day is for me so I just try to go with that um, live off the good days and not worry about the bad days and just keeps me going. Great advice. So what part of your life right now would you say is the most fulfilling? Most fulfilling part of my life now I would say it's got to be baseball. Just all I have going on right now is baseball in school and baseball it's just really nice when you're out there seeing all the work you put in on practice day pay off in the game so that's what keeps me going. So one day you'll look back on your life and see all that you've accomplished mm -hmm. And I feel like everyone has that one goal that they spend majority of their life chasing. What was that? What would that be for you? For me, I just I will always want to be the best at whatever I can be, whether it's a student, whether it's a baseball player, whether it's a friend or my career later on in life. I just always want to be the best. I don't ever want to look back on my life and saw that I went into something half-hearted. I want to give 120% everything I do and know that I never gave up. That's how I am with baseball. I'm going to go until I can't play no more. I'm not going to quit until someone tells me i got to quit. So. <laughs> Never settle. Love Never. it. So thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. And stay tuned for another episode of Beyond the Athlete. producers don't quit at 5 p.m. We don't quit until the job's done either. Bankers hours don't apply at First United Bank because we believe ag lending isn't a nine to five job. While you're out working the fields or managing the herd, we're making sure your money is working too. Whether it's for livestock, land, or equipment, we're one of the most dominant ag lenders in the state and have been burning the midnight oil since 1907. First United Bank, we know ag lending, we know ag.
Since 1933, the Panhandle Plains Historical Museum has housed the vast history of Panhandle Plains, given back to the community, and provided educational resources to those who live here. Located on the campus of West Texas A&M University, PPHM is free to all students, faculty, and staff at WT. We offer volunteer opportunities, internships, and hands-on research experience. From prehistoric times to pioneer travels, there's something for everyone at the largest history museum in Texas. Stop by and see us sometime. Oh, and don't forget, go Buffs! When you choose natural gas, chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. Towels get fluffier. Showers stay hotter for longer. And our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, nothing else could be more American. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. Back to Bain Schaefer Stadium as we get set for tonight's matchup between West Texas A&M and Central Washington. Right now, we want to head down to the field. Kent Johnson standing by for a preview of tonight's opponent, Kent. Well, thanks, Bryce. Central Washington enters tonight's game 4-2 and two on the season 4-1 and one in Lone Star Conference play. Last weekend, they took a 17-10 victory over Midwestern State, a homecoming victory back home in Ellensburg, Washington. The Wildcats enter tonight's game third place in the Lone Star Conference standings behind league leaders Angelo State, Texas A&M, Kingsville, who are tied for the LSC lead. Interestingly, both the Buffaloes and the Wildcats have had similar fates over the past two weekends. By that I mean they've defeated Midwestern State and lost to Western Oregon. Tonight marks the sixth all-time meeting in football between the Wildcats and the Buffaloes. The series goes back to 2008. This is the Wildcats' third trip to Canyon, their second to Bain Schaefer Buffalo Stadium, the most recent being 2019 when the Buffs took a 48-41 homecoming win over the Wildcats here at Bain Schaefer Buffalo Stadium. Central Washington is in its fourth season under head coach Chris Fisk. He has an overall record of 19 wins and 10 losses. Offensively, the Wildcats run a balanced offense. The quarterback is J.J. Lemming, a junior from Stellacombe, Washington. He's completed 47 of 72 tosses, 436 yards, three touchdowns. He's made five appearances this year. Interestingly, just one interception thrown. History lesson right here. Stellacombe, Washington was the first incorporated town into the area that would later become the state of Washington. It also boasts the first brick building in the state of Washington. We'll have a test in the fourth quarter. Now, J.J. Lemming's favorite targets, Tijan Matsuni and Darius Morrison. Mizutani led the Wildcats last weekend. The junior from Honolulu, Hawaii, 10 catches, 85 yards, and a touchdown against MSU. Morrison has five touchdowns and averages nearly 18 yards per catch. On the grounds where they're really tough, Trajan Henderson averages 102 yards a game. He transferred to Central Washington from Stephen F. Austin, where he played for Colby Carthel. His running games coach at Stephen F., Philip V. Hill, the head coach out at Western New Mexico. So there's a little LSC tie there between Central Washington, the Buffs, and the running game. Defensively, a pair of linebackers lead the Wildcats, and that's what you want to see. When your linebackers make the tackle, that means you're taking the attack to the line as opposed to when the secondary has it. Dayon Hudson has 48 tackles for the year along with three sacks and a pass interception. Brett Akamas has 46 tackles and one quarterback sack. Redshirt freshman Jude Malay handles the kicking duties. He's connected on seven of nine attempts with a long of 45. It's a cool, breezy evening here in Canyon. Game time temp is 74 degrees. Our wind out of the southwest, 15 to 20, gusting to 30. This is going to be the first game this year that we've had to worry about the wind having an effect on the kicking game, the punting game, the passing game. So we'll see how that plays out. We're going to take a timeout. 
when we come back. We'll have more of our pregame show with Bryce and Lucas. You're watching Buffalo Football on the LSC Digital Network. In 80 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating many years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. Choosing the right countertops for your kitchen can be tricky. Nowadays, there are hundreds of colors, patterns, and textures and materials that range from natural to engineered stone. Marble Depot is here for you throughout every step of the process. And yes, we do have a lot of options that might make that decision a little harder, but we're also going to ask the right questions so that you get the most out of your investment. So come by our showroom and let us help create what you've been dreaming of. What a great job there by the West Texas A&M marching band for the national anthem, getting us ready for West Texas A&M and Central Washington University. Again, I'm Lucas Kinsey, Bryce Sheets, my broadcast partner with me. And Bryce, as we get ready for this one, let's talk uh, West Texas A&M keys to the game, the things that we really feel like WT needs to do if they're going to come out with a win tonight, a much-needed win in conference action. Number one, and we looked at the stats, and this is the way it's been throughout the season, WT, we know they want to establish the run game. Most yes. teams do, but specifically with the Buffs. When they run the ball well, they usually win. Correct. The three losses this season, that hasn't been the case. They've averaged about 105 yards on the ground in the three losses. Now, for the season, WT well above that uh, right. on the ground. Right. And so for West Texas a and they ran for 277 yards in the win in Wichita Falls against Midwestern State. You go back to last week. We're watching that game against Western Oregon. At halftime, I sent you a text. I said, we only have seven, seven yards, seven yeah. rushing yards. Yeah. They finished with uh, 105. The question is, is WT going to get Jared Compton, Isaiah Smallwood, Okoye, even Nick Gerber going tonight on the ground against a tough wa uh, Wildcat defense? Well, I think that's the key. Nick Gerber may be the key tonight. In other words, you've got to keep them off balance, what their defense is looking for. And so if they can do that, if they can get him – maybe out on a couple of scrambles, that kind of loosens some things up a little bit. You don't want Nick throwing 50, 55 times in a ball game, yeah. which is what he did last week. We'd love to establish that run because if you can, that does a lot of things, but it really helps to balance your offense. Well, we heard Kent Johnson talking about the quarterbacks for Central Washington. They've right. got two really good quarterbacks. Quincy Glasper was the guy that started the season and did some really good things. He has around 800 passing yards on the season, and, and he can run. He's kind of their scrambling quarterback. But J.J. Lemming, he comes in in two games, does a pretty decent job. Last week gets a, a win against Midwestern State. He was the Lone Star Conference Player of the Week, very efficient. So 
e either way you go, he's more of a pocket passer, but that's going to play a big factor tonight. Well, that determines a lot, too, because if they have Lemming out there, if, or if they have their uh, Gaspar out there, then that means they're going to run a little bit because he is that optional quarterback that's going to move around a lot. If they have Lemming out there, then, yes, they'll sit in the pocket, and he'll look to dissect you. And so that means it's two different things for your secondary, whether they're coming up to support the run or whether they're staying in a pass pattern. And so. for a West Texas A&M defense, Bryce, it's preparing for two totally different quarterbacks. Yes. And it's a defense that is really banged up. Yes, it really is. And so that's a thing, too. Yes, next man up mentality, but really – what you got to have, you have, some, have to have somebody step up big tonight, and that's going to be a key. And for me, it's the front seven that's got to set the tone. Last key for the Buffaloes, and uh, just put this one on there. It's the mental aspect yeah. of this game for yeah. WT. Uh, three losses, yeah. and, and for as long as you and I have been doing this, you lose more than two games, and your chances of making the playoffs are minimal. Right. Uh, you know, just on life support, basically. But right. that tough loss last week did give the Buffs a third loss. Central Washington is in a totally different scenario. Now, they can't lose again, really, but Correct. they only have two, and we already talked about that, playing Kingsville right. and still Angelo State. They're looking at this like, guys, we, we went out. We will make the playoffs. So well, what, how does WT <laughs> respond? And they're a playoff team from a year ago, so that's the big thing. They know what it tastes like to get to the playoffs, and so they know they have to win out in order to get that, and they know their schedule is going to be tough. And so – but – if you look ahead yeah. and, and you kind of overlook West Texas, that's your problem. And so the thing is the Buffs hope they, they're looking ahead and so they can come out and attack early. And like we said, we need them to attack early tonight. If not, then for Central Washington, they want to do what they've been doing well the last few weeks and hopefully build on that. We do know one thing, the Maroon Platoon, they're always loud yeah. here at Bain Schaefer Buffalo right. Stadium, the home fans. I mean, energize them because we've seen that work in this stadium, Bryce. And that's why I said in the earlier, Hunter Hughes doesn't worry about the Buffs getting up to come out here and play because just like what they're running out now, basically th that gets the crowd ready to go and that gets the buffaloes ready to go so he knows the atmosphere is going to be great here yeah and so it's how can they carry that and they've got to again they've got to carry it in the first half and in the second half all right we'll take uh, the cameras out onto the field and yeah. we'll, we'll turn around and get you ready uh, continue the pregame here at bain schaefer buffalo stadium and let's uh yeah there you go so let's look at our x bar steakhouse x factor of the game as the buffs you see them getting ready to come out of the tunnel and Bryce, tonight our X Bar Steakhouse X Factor of the game. There's Hunter Hughes and Blake Bagwell. It's Nick Gerber tonight, and I know you say, well, it's the quarterback, obvious choice, right? But I'm telling you, Bryce, it, the, the UT Permian Basin game, he put the team on his shoulders. I mean, running, yeah. running the football, throwing the football. We have said it time and time again this year. He is playing. He knows it's his last year. Right. And right. he's playing like it. Well, and I think that's the thing. Again, he has to kind of set the tone a little bit. And so that's why I said in order for the running game to get going tonight, it may be him that has to establish a bit of a run in order for them to get going in this in this uh, ball game this evening. But the other thing, too, with Nick, the fact that, you know, he, he, he does such a good job keeping it balanced for the Buffaloes. And so as he comes into this, he's sixth all time in total offense here at the university in seventh in total passing yards, 6,773. But we need both tonight. You need Nick to be able to run, and you need Nick to be able to pass tonight. So that means receivers have got to do something a little more to get open. And the other thing is, can Nick take off and can, you know, you, you, you go back to whoever you want to look at in the NFL, whatever who wants to eat the foot, you know, basically yes. feed him the ball to let him eat. And so that's going to be Nick tonight. Yes, he'll touch it every time. But the thing is, he has got to be the one to step up and make things happen. Your X bar, X factor, uh, factor of the game, Nick Gerber. And you, you talked about it, wide receivers. And we'll talk about Noah as the game goes on. But Gardas has had a breakout year, Bryce. La yeah. Last year, uh, solid season. He was second team uh, all LSC. This year, 38 catches, uh, 628 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, seems like he, he uh, would have even more than three, but 16 and a half yards a catch. And uh, even last week in a loss, he was the leading receiver, six catches and 81 yards. Well, he can. He has the ability to take over a game. And so we really have yet to see that, though, this season, that when you just focus in on Noah and he's the guy you're going to go to because he's just going to get open and then turn it upfield. He's got great speed. 
obviously he can make things happen, and he's kind of elusive, and so that's the thing. We need him to kind of take over a game as well. We're looking at head coach Hunter Hughes uh, walking down the tunnel. Coach Hughes, sixth season here at West Texas A&M, 31 wins, 26 losses. There's a good stat, though, Bryce. He's 2-0 and against these Wildcats. <laughs> the game that you talked about where we made the trip to right. Ellensburg, Washington, you right. won that game, and I was interviewing Hunter down the field with the yeah. fireworks going. Right. Uh, and then they played Central Washington uh, here, here at Bain, Bain Schaefer Buffalo Stadium and won that game in 2019 in a shootout, 48-41. to As uh, we get ready to see Thunder 14 come out on the field, hope these herdsmen hang on, right? Yeah, last time we had the herdsmen go flying, I think, when they came running out. Kind of got a little slippery out there in the field. You get, the other thing that comes into play tonight, too, that we haven't even talked about yet uh, is the wind because it is very – this is probably the windiest it's been this season. So that could come into play not only in the passing game, obviously, but also in, in tries for uh, field goals and extra points. All right, let's take a look at those uh, Lone Star Conference standings. We talked about the big matchup really in the, in the country, one of the big matchups is Angelo State. They're number two in the country. Kingsville's number 14 in the country. And we're going to find out the Havilinas came to Canyon, uh, you know, early in the season and had a big win here against WT by a touchdown. What do you think about that one tonight, Bryce? Well, again, that will show if Kingsville is who they think they are and who we think they are. And so, you know, that's the big thing. They have really turned everything around uh, this season coming into this one. They weren't expected to be as strong as they are. And so, again, you know, you want to make believers out of everybody, well, then you go take on the number two team in the country and come away with a victory, and that says an awful lot about not only this LSC, but also going into the postseason. Buffaloes and the Wildcats getting ready to tangle here at Bain Schaefer Buffalo Stadium. West Texas A&M and Central Washington, the Wildcats. Again, four wins, two losses. They're 4-1 and one in Lone Star Conference play. And so these are the two losses, 36-20 to 20 at the very beginning of the season at Ferris State, right. who's a very quality opponent, Correct. obviously, uh, one of the top-ranked teams. And then there's that 16-14 loss against the old pesky Wolves of Western Oregon. So the question to there, too, is does, does Western Oregon just have some team's numbers and some teams just can't get around that? And I, and I say that because that's the problem with WT. They cannot win in Oregon. They, you know, they need to get them here and see if they can come away with a victory. There's a look at Hunter Hughes, Dylan Mata. There's my guy down there, Bryce. I'm, if I had the, the telestrator, I would circle <laughs> number six, Shaq Brown, and yeah. say, get this yeah. guy the ball. Yeah. Uh, Shaq, one of our talented tight ends, a 6'2 sophomore, and uh, he only averages nearly 19 yards a catch. Uh, on the season and, and the thing is you know we talk about numbers a lot throw those around but you again in the passing game you talk about Noah Bogardis or Shaq Brown's the other guy too and he was involved at Midwestern State yeah and so you've got to get him more opportunities and so and again that's easy for us sitting up here to say those things but again those are the ones that kind of stick out that can help get your offense going and then open up the run game. WT going to go with Shaq Brown and also Dylan Mata, one of our favorite players throughout the seasons uh, here at WT. Where's number 10 tonight? So they got the, the uniform in. They got it for the, we've been talking about it for several weeks. He's, he, been, he's been wearing 95, his old number, <laughs> but there he is in 10 looking uh, very sharp there. Those will be the two captains. On the other side for Central Washington, looks like it will be number 46. That's Daniel Stewart, number 67, one of the linemen, Noah Thompson, also number 96. That is Josiah Cochran, and number 29, Jaleel Breland. Well, this is a special moment here, as you see on the screen. That's Blake Badwell. Blake has been associated with WT for so many years, not only as a student, but now afterwards, too, and well. Uh, Honorary, he, honorary captain he's, tonight. He's an honorary captain tonight, but he's always been involved with football, keeping stats, doing things, whatever they want him to do. And so they're making a big special announcement tonight for Blake Badwell. And we'll let Brad make the announcement. With deep thanks to a special group of supporters of both Coach Blake Badwell and WT, we are thrilled to announce the establishment of the Coach Blake Badwell Football and Down Scholarship. And he just saw it on the screen. They put it on the screen. And so a scholarship will be in Blake Bagwell's name for uh, a football athlete. And so uh, Blake Bagwell, a longtime supporter of the team, and now they've established a scholarship in his name. That is really awesome to see that. 
So Central Washington. Okay, no, not yet. We're not here. I'll, 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 let me show them the color. Similar colors, different uh, color, more of a crimson color for yeah. Central Washington yeah. WT with that dark maroon. And we uh, we saw the Wildcats, Bryce, in warm-ups. They look very focused. Yeah, I think so. They know what's Okay, gentlemen, to welcome to the coin toss. I have a coin here, heads, tails. Central Washington, you're the visitor. Tails, tails is called. Okay. Coach Blake, please flip it. I did the best I could. And you did well. Tails it is. Okay. Central Washington will, will defer their choice to the second half. WT will take so the Central ball. Central Washington won the coin toss. Defend? And so they've deferred to the second to that half, goal. and so the Buffaloes will receive to get things going. So it'll be the offense out there to get. Yeah, West Texas. Begin this evening's contest. First. So West uh, Texas we'll about will, de Washington's will defense receive. Price. Gentlemen, they shake really hands. Good luck. Numbers. They're yeah. only giving up 16 Thank points so a game. Much. Yeah, the thing about that, too, is they haven't given up, obviously, averaging 16 a game. They just don't give up a lot of touchdowns. And so that's the thing. They're pretty measured in that category, six through the air, six on the ground. And so that means they're focused. And so they feel confident with their secondary. So they can allow their front seven to make some things happen as well. They like to go with that four-man front, three linebackers. And so, again, uh, Dayon Hudson is the guy that kind of makes things happen out there. And we saw that in warm-ups tonight. Yeah, he was in the middle. His team all huddled around him, and he, he was giving a fiery speech. I don't know what he was saying, but everybody, <laughs> every every eye it was, on him. was on the captain. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so whatever you saying was correct to get Central Washington fired up. But they do know, again, that we talked about it when we showed the Lone Star Conference standings. You've got number one and two getting set to play tonight. Well, you also got number three and four in the conference sitting, getting set to play right here at Bain Schaefer. And so, again, determines who gets off to a good start tonight. That can make the difference in this one as well. Back to receive the kickoff for the Buffaloes. Jared Compton, talented running back, and also Tyler Sweet. The kickoff specialist for Central Washington is number 49. There he is, Ashton Wolf. And we are glad to have you joining us. And the ball blows off the tee just again because of the wind. The wind, uh, you don't get a view of the American flag, but the flag's out to, um, to our right, basically. The wind is just nonstop from the west, southwest. And so it's kind of blowing across the field a little bit. So you go old school Charlie Brown yeah. here, right? Yep, get, get somebody absolutely. to hold the football and... If he picks it up like Lucy does, that'd be awesome. All right. We are ready <laughs> for football here from Bain Schaefer Buffalo Stadium. And a good kick that's going to go right into the hands of Compton. Actually, Sweet from the two-yard line. Tyler Sweet breaks it at the 20, 25, 30. Tyler Sweet into the clear at the 30-yard line. It's a race to the end zone, and he's tracked down wow. inside the 10-yard line. How about that return for Tyler Sweet? That's a great way to get things going. And again, the Buffs get a great kickoff, and so no flags. So just a nice wedge for Tyler Sweet to run through. And then once he got there, turned on the Jets. I think he ran out of a little bit of juice. Watch here on the replay. It's about the two-yard yeah, line. Yeah, he takes it at the two. There's a nice wedge right there. He slides through. There's a, a block. And then it becomes a foot race and trying to stay up with him. And then the angle came. That's what kind of got him knocked out of bounds by number 13 right there. Um, naturally, that's no one that's on the lineup card. Here, Jared so. Compton will take the carry, and he'll be stacked up, taken down, thrown for a loss of Warren on the first play from scrimmage. Good pursuit from Central Washington. That was a 92-yard return there for Tyler Sweet. So the Buffalo offense tonight, they're trying to say, okay, we're going to you know, build confidence with our offensive line. First play is going to be a run by Jared Compton. Unfortunately, it doesn't go where they needed to go, so now you've got to figure out what you can do a little differently offensively. All right, second down and goal here for the Buffs. High snap, Gerber got it down. He's going to keep it, and Gerber trying to get in the end zone. He does. Touchdown, Buffaloes. That is a great call because, again, you fake the handoff to Jared Compton like he did there, and then you roll out. We said, I said, need Nick Gerber to run with the football tonight to kind of get some momentum going for the running game where they're not concentrating on 10. they got to concentrate on all 11. And that time, Nick Gerber takes it around the left end for the score. Well, that's the way to get started for the yeah. X-Bar Steakhouse X-Factor of the game. Absolutely. 
Buffaloes strike first. Extra point coming here from Gage Urias, who has been outstanding this season, kicking for the Buffaloes. It's right down the middle. WT leads seven to nothing. They get a huge special teams return, and then Nick Gerber does the rest. It's seven nothing Buffaloes early from Bain Schaefer Buffalo Stadium. Back with more football after this timeout. Suddenlink is now Optimum with award-winning internet, TV, and mobile, giving you the power to get closer and go farther with speed and reliability. With our new 100% fiber internet we're building, together with Optimum Mobile, voted number one in customer satisfaction, you'll get the complete connectivity you deserve. And when you combine Optimum's award-winning connectivity with our 24-7 customer because service, your future is only a connection away. We live. And welcome back to Bain Schaefer Stadium after a 92 yard kickoff return. A very sweet return by Tyler Sweet sets up the offense. Two play drive. Nick Gerber takes it in from eight yards out. The extra point is good. And the Buffs take the early lead with 45 seconds gone off the clock. They lead it seven to nothing. Well, and uh, that there's a reason why they have special teams coaches, right? I mean, that makes a big difference. Buffaloes take advantage and here's the kickoff they'll be taken inside the 10 yard line up to the 20 weaving through traffic at the 30 now down near the 35 yard on a nice return and that was you got a number kind of rolled up there but that was number nine on the return that's Josh Flowers looking to see if it was Flowers or the talented receiver Taijan Nizutani and here's our first look at the offense. And Bryce, we will see Quincy Glasper. Interesting because he really didn't warm up tonight in pregame festivities. And so it primarily was Lemming that was warming up, but they're going to go with number one. Glasper, 6'3, 185 pound sophomore from Stockton, California, on first down. He's going to look to throw. Good pocket. Throws it's picked off. It's intercepted by the Buffs near midfield. And that's going to be an interception. For Freddie Simmons, wow. right into the hands of number 38, Freddie Simmons with his second interception on the season. Is that Freddie or is that? Uh, oh, signed Shuba. I'm sorry, you're right. It was, 30, it was 38, not 28. And that's yeah, signed Shuba. Shuba from Allen, Texas, the freshman. And signed, just you see right there, he just read the quarterback, and it was it wasn't high enough that it was over his head, so he was able to jump up, pull that one in, and so nice defensive play by the Buffaloes and so the offense back out there quickly. Nice job Shuva just a true freshman for the Buffaloes and the officials come in whistle blows. So Nick Gerber turns back to the referee and says something about the football. I think they still had the <laughs> Nick knew and hey, that's not that the, the kicking ball no, right? Yeah that's what it was the kicking ball that was out there I think and so we got to make sure the quarterback has the ball he wants, <laughs> he Bryce. He the right football. Just ask Tom Brady. Yeah, that's exactly right. Put enough pressure in there or not enough, depending on what's up. Play action pass is thrown incomplete into the hands and out, falling to the turf. Carn Bay, the intended receiver. So sets up second down. What a start here for the Buffaloes. Trying to get the tight end in motion that time, so he's out on the right side. So he only goes up about three, turns around, shows his number, just couldn't put the ball in. Again, they already lead by a touchdown and then get the quick interception from Sine Shuva. Now it's a handoff to Compton. Big hole opens up over the right side, runs through a defender, is taken down after picking up nine yards, making the stop for Central Washington, number 37, Jeremy Banks. And that's just a nice job of the right side of the line that way. Sam Treadway, Patrick Gray set up a nice block for him to get to the outside. Third and short here for the Buffs. Out of the gun. Compton gets just enough. Gets, gets it, two. Yep, yeah. gets across the 35-yard line. That's just what he needed to pick up. And so it's a, a good sign to see some offense up front, the offensive line pushing some bodies back because we didn't know how uh, WT's offensive line would stack up against Central Washington so far. They're doing really good. Brian Okoye comes in for his first opportunity. Yeah, Okoye, a talented freshman who actually, when you look at the stats this year, is averaging over five yards a carry. He takes it and is hit immediately. Nice job kind of crashing down from the defensive end position was number 99, Isaiah Carbajal. 
And they have some big linemen, the Wildcats do. Yeah, they, they really do. And so they go with four down linemen, but sometimes they'll run a linebacker up. So you got five on five. On second down, Okoye. Hard running again, but again, not much to gain. Maybe two yards. And just swarming tackling. One of the players in on the stop, number 96, Josiah Cochran. Josiah Cochran making that tackle. So they bring Sweet in on a third and throwing situation, third and seven. And if you're Central Washington, I mean, just you're only trailed by a touchdown, but they need to stop here because it, the, early in the game, it's been everything going in favor of WT with the long return, the interception. Gerber wants to throw on third down. Nobody's open, and here's Nick Gerber with his legs, and he scoots out of bounds. Right at the marker. He knew exactly where he needed to get, and the near side official saying, go ahead and move the chains. Yeah. He, he didn't do anything extra, which is good. Sometimes quarterbacks want to do extra. That time he knew where he needed to get to and got there. He is just so hard to account for defensively. Wildcats really defended that well in the secondary, but they could not shut down Gerber. Pass throw on the outside. Chris Sims catches it, spins off of two tacklers. Going forward, getting some push from his teammates, and he's got a nice nine-yard gain there. Yeah, a nice little... You have three receivers out on the far side of the field. Two of them come up and hit a block, and so that allows Sims to kind of cut it back in the middle and get a nice game. WT will work up tempo here. Okoye starts up the middle, cuts left, and is hogtied there. Yeah, nice open field tackle. Patrick Rogers comes up and just wraps him up, and so he kind of picks him up in the air. Patrick Rogers, the cornerback, kind of a big cornerback too able to make advantage of, and take advantage of that and make the stop, but Buffs get another first down. So Koye stays in at the running back spot, and he'll take the carry over the left side. Again, hard running, going to pick up a couple. They tried to overload the left side that time, add an extra blocker out there, trying to get him free, but again, just tried to turn it back to the inside, and Central Washington read it and made the stop. The safety, Jalil Breland, 6'3", 200 pounds, a junior from Seattle, Washington. He came up quickly from his safety spot. Here's second down and about eight for West Texas A&M. Gerber, play action. Going for the touchdown. He got it. Chris Sims hauls it in, and that was a beautiful pass. 13-yard strike from Gerber to Chris Sims. That is Sims' first touchdown catch this season. And so what the Buffs have done, run, run, maybe pass, run, run, run. And so they set it up with a play action that time. And so, again, fake the, fake the handoff, fake the run, and then just a nice, perfect strike to Chris Sims for the score. It is all WT right now early in this game. 10.36 to play first quarter. Urias trying to make it 14-0, and he does. So the Buffaloes playing with a lot of confidence early in this game. Leading by two touchdowns over Central Washington. We'll be back after the timeout here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. Timeout. 90-second media timeout. Since 1933, the Panhandle Plains Historical Museum has housed the vast history of Panhandle Plains, given back to the community, and provided educational resources to those who live here. Located on the campus of West Texas A&M University, PPHM is free to all students, faculty, and staff at WT. We offer volunteer opportunities, internships, and hands-on research experience. From prehistoric times to pioneer travels, there's something for everyone at the largest history museum in Texas. Stop by and see us sometime. Oh, and don't forget, go Buffs! And welcome back to Bain Schaefer Stadium as the Buffaloes go on a 10-play drive. Covers 45 yards the last 12, 12 yards of that. 
a Nick Gerber to Chris Sims pass. The extra point is good. All set up by Sign Shua interception. Yeah. And so, again, Buffaloes have dominated offensively here in the early going. And I say that they have 53 total yards to nothing yet for Central Washington just because their first play was an INT. We'd like to thank Jimmy Fincher Body Shop for their support of WT Athletics, equally skilled at repairing damages or customizing your vehicle. Jimmy Fincher is your top Amarillo body shop. So the Wildcats, let's see if they can get things going. A slow start for Central Washington. They're going to take the kickoff from the 10-yard line. And the Buffs were ready for it that time. Again, the same return man there, Josh Flowers. But he only, yeah, only got to the 25 that time. So nice open field tackle for the Buffs. Cade Cox comes up, makes the stop. And so we'll see the uh, Buffs defense. They've only been on the field for one play so far in this game as it was an interception that was thrown. And for Central Washington, they'll, they'll stick with their, their guy, quarterback Quincy Glasper, back on the field. First and 10, and whistles blow. A lot of movement on that one before it even got going, and so it was going to be a handoff to their running back. Ball start, uh, number Anderson. 51 of the offense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. And, so, <laughs> and the official went the wrong way first, then he marked it off. <laughs> Bryce, we're keeping an eye on uh, one of our favorite players tonight, Chris Thomas. Yeah. Uh, Number six career uh, tackles list for West Texas A&M. 303 has a chance tonight to pass uh, two of his buddies, Carter James and Eric Collins, at fifth and fourth on the all-time tackles list tonight. First play here for Central Washington on the ground. Trajan Henderson, pretty good play there over the right side, and we get a taste of number five. Kent Johnson told us about Trajan. He is nearly 220 pounds from Fort Worth, Texas, so he's coming back uh, to his home state. Spent uh, a year at uh, SFA, Stephen F. Austin. Right, right. And he's been pretty special for the Wildcats. He is, and again, you know, 220, I think it's even being modest. He looks a little bigger than that. A very solid individual and get good speed, got to the outside. Nice gain. Sets up second down and about four here. Henderson again over the right side, and there's Chris Thomas. Yeah, picks up one of those tackles right there. Didn't allow him to get to turn the corner that time, so Chris wraps him up and takes him down. And, Bryce, you know, it's hard to explain with Chris. I mean, <laughs> today I put out a tweet, and I said solid, steady, and, you know, he's a humble kid, no, but, he's, but he's a fierce competitor. He's a quiet leader, and again, but when he's out there, that motor is at a different gear, has been since, you know, his freshman year. And so, again, nice to see the accolades coming his way. Buffalo's changing things up on the defensive line for Defensive lineman there as they bring some pressure. They roll out Glasper, throws on the run, and that's incomplete. Good coverage by the Buffs. They were trying to go to one of their tight ends, Caden Hammond, but uh, it's going to be time for the Wildcats to punt the football back yeah, to WT. Yeah, fourth down, and again, now this early in the ball game, too, you want to make sure you're, everybody's aware. Don't jump off sides, do anything silly to give them a first down. But again, good pressure by Chris Thomas on the quarterback that time, and he just kind of you know, had to throw it before he wanted to. We've already seen Tyler Sweet electrify this crowd with the opening kick return. Took it 92 yards back and set up the Buffs' first touchdown. He stands back on his own 25-yard line awaiting the punt from Daniel Stewart. And the Buffs brought pressure, they nearly got it. got it. Oh, the punt goes over Sweet's head. He's frustrated, knows he needed to come up and fair catch that. It's going to be down at about the 16-yard line. And we have a and timeout. Time and so we will step aside. We'll take a timeout. Time out. 90 seconds. Media timeout. 14 to nothing here in the first quarter. They're going to try to kick a football through the goalpost.
Well, welcome back to Bain Schaefer Stadium. Buffs lead this one early, 14 to nothing. And again, the Buffs have taken advantage of a couple of opportunities. A 92-yard kickoff return to set up the first score of the ball game. Then Sanchuba with an interception that set up the second score. And with five minutes gone in the first quarter, the Buffs are up 14 to nothing. Yeah, this uh, WT team really looking early on uh, in this game, the more focused team. Gerber, play action, they roll him out, pass thrown, and overshoots his intended receiver, I guess, is that was Maxwell Perez. It was, and again, trying to get it more to the tight ends because they think that's where they can take advantage. But Max was double coverage that time, so really the smart thing to do for Nick Der Gerber was just throw it over his head, throw it to a spot where there wasn't anybody, and that's exactly what he did. Early on, the stats all in favor of WT, 53 total yards in the first drive. They only had to go eight yards to punch it in. But uh, 11 total yards for Central Washington. The Wildcats, no passing yards, an interception. And just that one, uh, they don't even have a first down. No. Four to nothing in that category. Gerber, pressure in his face, complete. That's Bogardis. And Noah's got a big first down all the way near midfield. Gerber got popped right as he threw that ball. And you talk about threading the needle and getting that connection to his favorite receiver. Look at this play, Bryce. Yeah, and again, as he unloads it, then Bogardis has two men he's trying to get away from and picks up the big first down. Buffs work quickly. It was just on the other side of midfield. Gerber slings it outside. Catch made by Tyree Tipton. A really good play defensively there to make this quick stop. It was number six, Dominic Weberg. And again, that was, they were trying to do, set it up the same way, throw the back shoulder and then spin to the interior that time. They thought they'd get the overplay from the defensive back, but that time he stayed right on it and made the tackle. So Central Washington's defense being challenged early. Again, remember, they only give up 16 and a half points per game. They've already allowed the Buffaloes to score two touchdowns here early in the first quarter. So Gerber signaling out some plays, uh, the play call here to his receivers, fakes it, he's going to run it and it's kind of be baited there, steps out of bounds about three yards short of the first down they had a spy on him that time, yeah. they still picked up some yardage, that was Patrick Rogers right. that just came over. And so the thing is that's the accountability that Central Washington has to come up with now because they weren't worried about Nick Gerber running before and so that changes the balance of what your defense can do and so, again, you've got to have somebody that accounts for the quarterback. Well, they should be worried about him. He's the third leading rusher uh, on the team this season. <laughs> right. Right. Ask, ask the Falcons. He ran for 110 yards and a touchdown in the win over UTPB. Jared Compton, a big hole opens up, and he gains enough to move the first, uh, the sticks, first down buffs to the 40-yard line. Jared wanted to bust that to the outside. He had an open lane, went up the middle in that open lane, then wanted to go to the outside. And so that's where they were able to wrap him up, but not before he picks up the first down. He's off to a good start tonight. It's hard to believe, Bryce, this season Compton does not have a game over 100 yards or plus this year. I know. 99 on the road against Midwestern State. Does have five rushing touchdowns on the year. Compton takes it again and is kind of caught there after a pickup of two. Good job defensively. Come up to make the stop was number 27, Brett Akamas. And that's where your running back coach always says, hang on tight to the football. That time they stopped him, and then another player comes in, grabs the football, and is trying to wrestle it away from Compton. Akamas, a senior out of Woodenville, Washington. Gerber steps into this throw, and that mate was it? I think it was tipped okay. because he had an open. He was trying to get it over on the near side to Red Jr., and and he was coming across. It he was open, but it came. Yeah, I think it had to be tipped. So third and long, and so far the Buffs are perfect on third down. They're three for three. <laughs> Hope we don't jinx them with that stat. Gerber sets up the screen. Yeah, we did jinx him on that one because they read it perfectly. So they knew it was going to be a screen pass to Jared Compton. And that throw them back for about a seven-yard, eight-yard loss. Yeah, Josiah Cochran makes the tackle. And, and that's one where a lot of times Bryce, the quarterback, will see that and just, just throw, throw it, it away. Of, yeah. Throw it out of bounds. Yeah. So a nice job defensively there by Central Washington. They're going to get the football back as Ollie Yart will come on to punt, and we will see a dangerous return man back there for Central Washington. Number eight, Tajon Mizutani. He's not going to get a chance uh, 
to return this one, though, because the punt goes out of bounds. So pushing and shoving there at midfield. Karn Bay and one of the Wildcat special teams players having a conversation. <laughs> Just talking about the weather, the wind. You it's know, different it's here in Texas different here, in Washington, yeah. right? Yeah, a little more wind, you know, so. We want to thank Amarillo National Bank for their support of WT Athletics. Amarillo National Bank, locally owned, family strong, and here to stay. So if you're Central Washington, Bryce, what do you do to get on track offensively? Well, and again, their quarterback hasn't played for two weeks, and so, again, trying to get him on track is the other thing, too. They got the double tight end set there. They're both on the right side of the field. Glasper throws, and it's dropped, and that's not going to help things because that was a perfect strike there to his intended target. Number 19, DeMonte Horton, and that went right in the numbers. Yeah, again, that was one of DeMonte. Same thing, goes up about five yards, turns around, and presents his number, and really, Gasper, a nice um, strike there. He just didn't catch it. He heard footsteps and, and bottled it. It was a good look down on the sidelines of Christian LeMay, the wide receivers coach for West Texas A&M, talking to his guys. Second down and 10 here for the Wildcats. They give it to Henderson. Runs up the middle for a short gain. The Buffs do a good job. The linebackers come up. Gage Smith helps out as well. You love seeing Gage come up from the safety position. And then also number 49 there for the Buffaloes defensively. That is Braylon Suck. Lots of different players having right. to come in defense. Got some injuries, injuries that we got to work through here. And one, so. one of those is uh, the preseason defensive player of the yeah. conference, JT Cavender. He's been out for the last four games with season-ending injury. There was movement, but nope. no, no flags. Did the Buffs get back defensively? They did get back, okay. but then there was movement on the offensive line before the snap, and I'm kind of surprised that there wasn't a flag on that. But that's okay because it brings up fourth down. Well, the Wildcats will punt it back to WT again, and you, you said it a couple of times, Bryson. Again, you can't put it all on, on one guy because no. especially that last throw was dropped for Central Washington, but this offense has just not gone anywhere, and you wonder if the quarterback is at full strength. You wonder if Central Washington makes a change at some point and goes back to the guy who was the Lone Star Conference player of the week last week in J.J. Lemming. This wow. is a booming punt that goes over the head of Sweet and is going to be downed at the one yard wow, line. Nice job, special teams. Incredible. Play. Yeah, that was one of the highest punts I've seen here. And again, the wind helps when it's at your back, but. Um, that was Daniel Stewart, and that's gonna be his long for the season. It has to be. Because his previous long was 53 yards. Yeah, that was just a perfect punt. And he had pressure on him, too, that time, and so he was able to get it away. 67-yard punt. Can you kick it that far, Bryce? I can't, th I can't even drive. I can drive it that far in my car, but that's about it. Okay. So. Well, that packs the buffs up. Yeah, so you're in the shadow. I mean, the big shadow of your go poles. So what do you do? Shaq Brown is what you do. You put him at quarterback, but Shaq runs right into the teeth of the defense there for Central Washington. He's coming up to make the tackle was the safety, J Jaleel, uh, Jahil Breland. Well, and that's not a bad thing to do either because you got a much bigger, you know, player that playing the quarterback position that can run it. Now they bring Gerber in. Oh, did he get out? I don't I, know I don't, that he got out. I don't know if he did either. That's going to be a safe. Well, the official on the far sideline signaled safety. The head linesman came in and said that he did get out. So they gave him half a yard on that one. The, are they going to talk about it or just spot it at the half yard They're line? They're going to spot it at the half yard line. Okay, wow. That was dangerously close. <laughs> yeah, and walking down the sideline asking is Chris Fiss. He said he was in the end zone. He didn't even get out. Okoye is the running back. Shaq Brown in along with Carn Bay and Maxwell Perez. Three tight ends, and the oh, bus just bus jumped, move. which at this point. Yeah, you're only going to go half the distance. Ball start, very far. number seven of the back, offense. Honestly, half the distance at this point, to the goal remains third down. I wouldn't mind seeing a quick kick from Nick Gerber just to get it out of there. They don't have anybody back, so you could boot it away. Kenneth Red Jr. Is the receiver split out on the far side? Snap back to Gerber. Hand off, Okoye up the middle, and he gets out 
across the five to the six yard line. It's still going to be fourth down and long, but now but your punter's not backed up no, no, the back no back of his end zone. Exactly. So there's now some room for him to move a little bit. And so uh, at least you got out of the shadow a little bit and get it out to the seven yard line. Tajan Mizutani, the junior from Honolulu, waits at the WT 40 yard line. And Central Washington really spread out. They're going to come after this punt. Holly Art gets it away. Mizutani makes the fair catch at about the 37 yard line. This is going to be an incredible field position here for Central well, Washington. Will be the best for them this ball game so far. And so. This, if you want to give your offense a bit of a, a break, uh, get them something to get them going here, trailing 14 to nothing with 331 left to play in the first quarter. This is it right here. It's pretty cool. Earlier, Bryce, we had a, a shot of U.S. Congressman Ronnie Jackson, uh, his wife Jane, and their son Matthew, and also uh, Texas Senate candidate Kevin Sparks, his wife Jill, Representative John Smithy. So it's, it's politics some, season, yeah, right? Yeah, it is. Some dignitaries out here tonight. Got the. Baseball time, football time in November with the elections. That's a throw across the oh. middle and, and another drop. That's one maybe maybe you say it's a little high, but I think that's one that that's Marcus Cook, he's got to catch that. That's catchable, and that's the thing. I mean, that really, he threaded, you know, the perfect spot with the football right there, and he had it in between defenders. And so, again, I, I don't think you can throw it any better than that, to be honest. Receivers really need to help Quincy Glasper out a little yeah, bit. Yeah. And the thing is, my question is, has he practiced a lot this week? And so are they on the same page with the receivers? And, and so we'll see. Second down and 10. Trajan Henderson, the running back. He'll take the carry and go forward for a nice four-yard gain in this Central Washington offensive line. 330. Kent Powell, 6'4", 330 sophomore. The center is 6'2", 300 pounds, Scotland Vice. Over on the right side, Slade Edwards and Raymond Schalk. Big bodies up front. And they have a lot of players, obviously, from the state of Washington, but also a lot of players from California as well. Yeah. No, they've been able, Chris Fisk has been able to go recruit in some certain pockets that have benefited his club. And more Texas players on the yeah. roster than you would realize. Yeah. Third down and six here for Central Washington. Glasper throw catch and he went to Mizutani right at the sticks. I think he's got enough. Let's see. Yeah, they're going to tell him to move. I was going to say, and if I was Hunter, I'd ask for a measurement on that. But again, they quickly got the measurement or got the the chains moved, and so that'll be their first first down. Good ball game. Good target to go to. Mizutani last week had 10 catches, 85 yards, and a touchdown against Midwestern State. And again, Central Washington trailing the Buffs by two touchdowns. First time that they have been close to the red zone, though, so far in the ballgame. Yeah, first time they've had a really good offensive set. Play action. Glasper got hit as he released the ball, and that's incomplete. And that was Xavier Rivera. <laughs> X-Men came up and just put an X on him. But I he mean, did a good job he, of no nothing he, illegal, he right? Right, absolutely. He just, you know. Wanted to give him a little, you know, love tap and say, hey, I'm right here. Next time, you better get rid of it quicker. You know? So overshot his intended target in the end zone. What we haven't seen so far is Glasper running, you know, get him out of the pocket and get him on the move. He's, he's mostly stayed inside that pocket. He can run, though. Second and ten. But at the uh, last two games, he's been out with the injury. Keeps it this time. Yep, on the run. Good throw and the catch made by the redshirt freshman Logan Brady. That'll be enough for a first down up to the 15-yard line. Had Brady on one-on-one -on, -one on the near side. He was going against Ty Dillon and then uh, was able to make a nice move and get open and pull that one in for the first down. So we're under two minutes to play first quarter. And that noise you hear is across the field from our position. That's the Maroon Platoon. The student section getting up, making some noise. On first down, the Wildcats run it up the middle. Trajan Henderson able to pick up about three yards. Runs into a pile 
uh, for the Buffaloes, Eric Goodman, and also in on the stop, number 90, Jaden Jackson. He's a redshirt freshman from San Antonio. Again, they just kind of go right behind their center on that one. Just want to, you know, the line wants to push forward as far as they can. And then, again, you just give it to Henderson and let him just power his way straight ahead. Under a minute to play. Receiver goes in motion. Glasper hands it off. Running play to the left side. Henderson gets a good block and then is pushed out of bounds. He's short of the first down, but inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. So it's a 4-yard run. Buffs, you know, that's good film study because they saw the man in motion. They shifted to the near side. They just couldn't get everybody over there they needed to because they knew that would be Henderson running to the left or the near side of the field. And so they read it perfectly. They just didn't get their bodies where they wanted them to quick enough. He gave him a spot to the eight. So it is third down and three here for what for uh, Central Washington. And Glasper goes under center. The tight end moves to the fullback position in front of Henderson. And the ball was fumbled. Glasper lost the ball. It's still loose. The Buffs recover it. And they're running it back at the 40-yard line. I, I thought I've seen everything, Bryce. Wow. I don't know what happened on that because I don't know how that was bobbled. Again, he was under center. And so it was going to be a handoff. Let's see if we get a replay on this one because I'm not sure how that was bobbled. Uh, again, uh, Samante. There it is. Yeah, watch this here. And so, okay, so he lost it. He was turning to hand it off and then lost the handle. And so Samote comes up with it. Samote, Samote. Yeah. It looked like the Buffs were just going to fall on it, but, or, then, but then Samote scooped it and started to run. Nice or as job. I know him as Mo, because he's out there yeah. officiating our kids' games. Now they're going to move the ball back because I think a player touched it and was down. During the fumble return. Sideline interference on the West Texas A&M bench. That'll be a 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down, West Texas A&M. Oh, it's an unsportsmanlike conduct. Sideline. Okay. Yeah, it's, All right. Yeah, the... the uh, Buff's got a penalty, a 15-yarder, and okay. so so that's what moved the ball back. I'm with you. I, I thought maybe the Buffs were down. I thought they touched it when they were the down. The ball scored it yeah, out. Yeah, so. Samote continued to run, but that was not the case. There was a penalty marker, wow. and it was a sideline, not a warning, but a penalty against the Buffaloes. So now they have the ball, West Texas A&M does, from their own 28-yard line. Compton hit hard, thrown for a loss. That was a big tackle on the Far side of the field. That'll be the last play of the first quarter. That, that concludes the, the first quarter of play. Washington. So it's a great first quarter for the home team, Buffaloes. Central Washington, a little out of sorts, and they trail by two touchdowns as we head to the second quarter. We'll take the timeout, come back with more football here from Bain Schaefer Buffalo Stadium. You're watching Central Washington and West Texas A&M on the LSC Digital Network. This is a walk-on athlete. They train long and put their heart into the game. This is the passion we're built on. It's why we put our heart into creating game day. With a taste of Louisiana. Walk-ons, we live for this. Since 1910, WT and the Department of Agricultural Sciences has provided high quality education to the students of the Panhandle and beyond. At WT, professors know me and are committed to my success. If you want to get an ag industry job, WT is where you need to be. I don't want just a job and a paycheck after graduation. I want a career where I can make a difference. WT invested in my career. I intend to pay it forward. Well, welcome back to Bain Schaefer Stadium, where the Buffs, after the first quarter of play, lead 14 to nothing. And again, the Buffaloes have been able so far to take advantage of miscues by Central Washington and also a great kickoff return for the very start of the ball game. And so let's see what the Buffs can do here on second down and 11. All right, here's Gerber on second down play action. 
Good protection, airing it out down the side. He's got a receiver down there and a good effort to bring that one in, but it's going to fall to the turf incomplete. Keneath Red Jr., it was excellent coverage on the play for Central Washington down there. Trying to get Keneath out ahead, and he did. And Keneath used his body to kind of shield it away from, shield the defender away from the football. Just couldn't come up with grabbing that and pulling it in. That was Jeremy Banks. It was in coverage there, number 37. You got Max Perez out it. Now like he's in motion, okay. You say he was lined up way outside. Snap back to Nick Gerber looking. Now going to try to run, but Central Washington did a good job of just closing up things. They did not let Gerber escape, and he's thrown for a loss. A sack back to the 20-yard line. Well, credit Christian Penny because he's the one that gummed that up. He was trying to get to an open lane. Christian Penny read it and just stayed on his man and then stepped over where Nick wanted to run with the football. So now it's fourth down and 18. If you're a Central Washington fan, Bryce, you're saying, okay, our defense is settling in now, but goodness, right. the offense has just had too many miscues. Yart gets the punt off. This good is one. a really good punt. Goes over the head of Mizutani, who has to just watch it roll down near the 25-yard line. Both teams are bringing a lot of pressure on the punt block. They really are. They're both trying to get there as much as they can, and that time the Buffs, with the wind at their back, took advantage of it. As we take a look at our, well, we'll look in just a moment at our first quarter stats, but it's all really in favor of WT here, leading 14 to nothing. And Bryce, we do have a quarterback change here for the Wildcats. Coming on now will be number 16, J.J. Limming. Last week, 26 of 36 passing, 227, a couple of touchdowns. He threw to seven different players. They'll run it, though, on first down to Henderson and Chris Thomas there for another stop. Nice job by Chris, and again, the Buffs had the nickel package in there that time, and so with using that, uh, again, they anticipate with this quarterback, he's going to stay primarily in the pocket, and they expect him to throw the football. All right, Chris has four tackles, so he's now tied with Carter James at that fifth place spot, and his buddy Eric Collins uh, told him earlier today, he said, go go get it, buddy. Go, there you go. Go, go pass me and get up there on the, uh, the charts. We get on the all-time tackles list for West Texas A&M. We've had some outstanding linebackers over the years. Henderson takes the carry on second down, and again, there's not much running room. He gets to the 31-yard line, so it's a three-yard pickup for Henderson. Well, WT's doing a nice job of gang tackling, looking for the run there, and so they're doing a nice job of coming up and just being able to stop anybody trying to come in the middle. Well, to this point, WT defensively, Bryce, seems to have this strategy. It proved to us that you could throw because we know how good Henderson is. We are going to stop him. You're yeah. going to have to beat us through the air. Bring out a late defensive back. So, again, J.J. Lemming at the quarterback spot. Three receivers to the right. And WT, four defensive players on the line. They bring some pressure. The throw over the head. Not really anywhere close to the intended receiver on the play, which was Marcus Cook. And, and it's I'll fourth go, down. I'll go back to what you just said. I think that's accurate. Is they're saying we're going to stop the run, so you're going to have to throw it. And right now, so far early, Central Washington has had a tough time just finding any rhythm in the passing game. So a lot of work for both sides punters over the last several possessions. We saw earlier, uh, back in the first quarter, Daniel Stewart, Boot won 67 yards. Left-footed punter puts this one high in the air, and Tyler Sweet not going to get a chance to return it. He almost came up, tried to grab it, but because, again, going the opposite Time out. Over, gets 90 seconds. Media timeout. Kind of slows it up. It was do uh, downed at about the 31-yard line. A 39-yard punt. Let's take a look if we got our first – Quarter stats. We put those up for you quickly. And again, Buffalo's kind of control this one, 14 to nothing. And you look, rushing yards, 47 to six, 48 to 19 passing, 96 total yards to 25. And again, two turnovers of what have also hurt uh, Central Washington here in the early going. And time of possession is that rack? Is that accurate? 14.55 in the first quarter to 105. 
to Central Washington. The Buffs just kind of control that quarter. WT Athletics would like to thank AOMS for their continued support of our athletes. AOMS, the official oral surgeon of WT Athletics, is committed to helping your family keep happy, healthy smiles. And also, the Canyon Chamber of Commerce, they are a proud partner of WT Athletics. That's the Canyon Chamber. They work with local businesses to provide economic growth for the city of Canyon. Thank you so much for your continued support of WT Athletics. And speaking of WT Athletics, Bryce, we, yeah. uh, we've we been busy today. We have. You did a soccer I broadcast. Did. I did a volleyball yeah. broadcast. To start with you and uh, yeah, talk about the Lady Buffs soccer team. Lady Buffs at home taking on St. Mary's. Uh, went to a 1-1 draw with St. Mary's. And again, the Lady Buffs in the top three in the conference. And they got two left, two regular season matches left. And so, again, they're trying to get that first round to where they get to host a first round playoff in the LFC. And so, Again, 1-1 one, one draw on that one, and so nice ball game for them today against St. Mary's. At over at the box, the Lady Buffs volleyball team defeated Eastern New Mexico 3-1. The Lady Buffs have won 13 straight matches. Uh, they're awesome right now. Again, uh, and soccer 12-1-3 and three on the year. Okay. Right that was a handoff to Okoye, which I've told you this before, is, is just a fantastic name because, again, <laughs> who does it make me think of? The starting lineup figure I had as a kid. Christian Okoye. Yeah, it really does. I believe he was the Nigerian nightmare. Are they related? Does anybody check on that? Well, he, Brian's got to keep growing if, he's, if he is related to <laughs> well, Christian. That's true, too. Gerber is going to run it here and just escapes. It's so hard to bring down Nick Gerber. The open field tackle there for Central Washington. But again, go back to what you said earlier. That's two guys that were spying on him that time. So a safety comes up, and so too does a corner that comes over and tries to keep him blocked in a little bit. It was Tanner Volk that came up and made the stop, the sophomore from Portland. Buffs are going to get the first down. There's a Koye, and that, that's how you run uh, yeah. with that last name. First down, Buffaloes, up to the 46-yard line. And the WT offensive line looking much better this week as well. Buffs with a hurry up. Gerber, good protection. Throw to the outside, incomplete. Tight coverage, Volk. Was right there step for step with Hunter Kaufman. Incomplete, sets up second down second and 10. Down. And that's where Kenneth Red Jr. that time was driving up the field. I think if he looked out of the corner of his eye, could have peeled back. He might have been in position to pull that pass in. And again, easier said than done when you're sitting up here looking as opposed to being out there actually playing. Okoye still in it running back. Pressure comes in Gerber's face. He throws it quickly to Karn Bay, who makes the catch, but he's taken down immediately. Only a gain of one. So that for the Wildcats, great defensive call. You get the, the edge rusher coming right. free, right. and then the defense is right there step for step, so it's a, only a one-yard gain. So this will be interesting to see what the Buffs do on this third and long. Again, uh, they were... Um, perfect in third down situations and now they're they're not and so got movement central just got back or that would have been a five-yard penalty four seconds on the play clock gerber's got to hurry two seconds one they just get it off again all day to throw here and now he'll roll out of the pocket a penalty marker is thrown gerber's in trouble and has to just sling this ball out of bounds and that the marker was thrown way back in near the secondary. So that makes you wonder if there was some contact there. And so we'll wait for the officials, but it may have. May Holding have been, yes. number 29 of the defense, 10 yard penalty, yeah, automatic where, first where down. Flag is that indicates somebody was coming out of a run. Yeah, and somebody grabbed a jersey and just held on. And so a big advantage for the Buffaloes as they pick up another first down. They caught Jaleel Breland. From the safety position, holding one of the WT receivers. So it's first and 10, West Texas A&M, leading 14-0. Second quarter action, 10-22, still to play before halftime. Gerber, play action. Carnbay was wide open, hurdles a defender. He's across the 30-yard line, another first down, up to the 28, 15-yard pickup from Gerber to Carnbay. It's a sweet play action play there. It was a great play action play because everybody bit. You see there, he just jumps up and throws it to Carnbay as he pulls it back. Nicely done. And Carnbay already a couple of catches. Okoye, they fake it to him. Gerber runs at the 25, 20, and out of bounds. And the Wildcats are finding out 
just how difficult life can be when number 15 is out there scrambling around. Well, and again, it goes back to our keys of the ball game. We have to do a better job running the football tonight, and so far the Buffs have, but it's in part because of Nick Gerber. First and 10, West Texas A&M, now inside the red zone. Gerber will throw on the outside, hangs it up high. Oh, man. And thank goodness that pass was too high, or that would have been an interception because Tanner Volk came across, uh, read it the entire way, and he nearly went up and made an acrobatic catch. He really did, and again, it was just high enough. The receiver back there trying to pull it in was Tyree Tipton, and he just couldn't get high enough, but thankfully that was the case. On second down, this time they go on the ground. Huge hole opens up for a Koye. Spins five into the end zone. Stampede, baby. What a nice run by Brian Okoye. And again, that really, he got an open hole, and then everything else was on his own, and he kind of dives into the end zone to pick up that score. That's an 18-yard run coming right at you from Brian Okoye. The B Buffalo's offensive line blocked it well, and then Okoye did the rest as he's off to a great start. He's going to be up to over 50 yards on the ground already after that run. Urias is going to try to make this a three-score lead for the Buffaloes. And the extra point is right down the middle. West Texas A&M leads 21 to nothing. There's a look at Brian Okoye getting some handshakes. <laughs> from his, from his Time out. 90-second media timeout. So are the Buffs. They lead it 21-0. We'll be back after this timeout here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. The best tailgates start with the best beef. And the best beef starts with Market Street. Market Street, where we do beef the best. Welcome back to Bain Schaefer Stadium. Buffaloes on a nine-play, 69-yard drive. Very nicely done. An 18-yard run in from Brian Okoye. The extra point is good. And the Buffs now lead this one 21 to nothing. 9.30 left to play here in the first half. And so far, this first half has been ideally what the Buffaloes need from the standpoint. Rushing yards, 84 in the first half. Uh, the fact, they, they're they're rushing more than they're passing, and so that's a big plus in tonight's contest against this tough team from Central Washington. Flowers just going to kneel in the end zone, and Central Washington will come out. Let's see which quarterback will come out here for the Wildcats. They, again, offensively, they have just stumbled. They had the one drive last time they had the ball. Bryce got down uh, inside the 10-yard line, and then they fumbled. And then they fumbled it away, and that's, you know, then they changed quarterbacks, and so trying to find where is that good combination. And it'll bring, uh, of course, they'll give J.J. Lemming another shot here as they come out for another series here in the second quarter. We uh, appreciate all everyone tuning in here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network, our, especially our viewers from the Washington area. There's a handoff up the middle and a good run for Trajan Henderson, about a four-yard gain. Uh, one of our uh, viewers, a uh, Wildcats fan, sent this in, Bryce, and uh, on the message <laughs> board said, hey, fun fact, guys, Christian Okoye played college football for Azusa Pacific, which, oh, okay. which is which is true, former uh, GNAC football member. Right. And, uh, yeah, the Nigerian nightmare. That's he, right. No relation to Brian, but, uh, again, for the Buffaloes, uh, we love the last name and we love the way he's running the football tonight. We absolutely do. 
Second down and six here. Throw on the outside. And the receiver does a good job of coming back to make the catch. It's going to be one yard short of the first down. But give the catch to DeMonte Horton. DeMonte did everything right, too, that time because he helped his quarterback out. That was a low throw. He had to kind of slide back, and, and as he was going down on the turf, able to pull that in and secure it and really did a nice job of completing the pass. Boy, if the Wildcats ever needed a first down, it's right here. Third down and one, trailing 21 to nothing. They bring in their heavy package with three tight ends, a fullback, and it's a handoff over the left side. New running back, and it's a first down. Good play there for Central Washington. That's going to be Cameron Daniels on the carry for the Wildcats and a good push from that offensive line. Daniels, a sophomore from Seattle. Yeah, he just went behind the center and the left guard that time. Had an open hole to run to, and the buffs had kind of stacked the box a little bit, so they were there waiting for it, but it still got enough for the third first down of the ball game for Central Washington. They'll keep Daniels in at the running back spot. He's 5'10", 200 pounds. And the quarterback, quarterback falls down. He stumbled again. And that was going to be a, a good running play again for the Wildcats, but... J.J. Lemming, you know, sometimes you, you come out of your under the under center and the lineman will, steps back on your foot or something. Yeah. That's what it looked like happened that time. Somebody stepped back and just kind of locked him up and he couldn't go anywhere. So it brings up second down and long. Yeah, they lost yardage there. Second down and 13 as they split three receivers out to the far side for J.J. Lemming, but they keep it on the ground. Cameron Daniels, oh, not much there. Buffs kind of string the play out. A.J. Magruder, one of the defensive linemen in there, along with, looks like for WT, number 35, and that's Daniel Ajayi. Well, again, Ty Dillon that time shifted everybody over to the where the receivers were, but he stayed at home, uh, again, just in case they do something, go the opposite direction on the running play, and he was there to help out on the tackle to make the stop. So now it's third and 11. Daniels, the running back behind Lemming, pistol formation. The receivers are stacked tight here. Buffs with three-man defensive line front. Lemming looking, throws down the field. The receiver trying to come inside and make a play on the ball. Couldn't do it. Good coverage for the Buffs by Ty Dillon down the field. Stay with him step for step. Got his head turned around, saw where the football was, and then just kind of leaned into the player trying to force uh, that incomplete pass and that's exactly what he got on that play. So it'll be punt time again here for Daniel Stewart. The Buffs defense does a really good job there. Tyler Sweet will stand on his own 25 yard line. He's been a dangerous weapon tonight for WT. And this punt not as good again into that wind taking a bounce backwards towards the direction that WT wants it to go. Official's going to spot it out at the West Texas A&M 45-yard line, 21-0. Bryce, just being completely honest, uh, not the score we expected. Really, no. we expected this one to be a tight game tonight yes. uh, for both teams, but Central Washington has been very flat, and the Buffaloes have done a nice job. You, you know, you never take, you take into account, and I'm going to say the same thing from last week, when you go from our area to the West Coast, or the other way around. I think it just throws off your rhythm a little bit. Here's Gerber, and he's running at the 50-yard line into Central Washington territory. So busted play. They read it nicely, and they came in, put pressure on him. He was able to spin away from the pressure, and then turn it upfield and pick up the first down for the Buffaloes. Nice run by Nick Gerber. Gerber racking up the yardage. Has over 40 yards on the ground. Okoye met at the line of scrimmage and cannot escape the grasp of number 35, Kai Gamble, a senior defensive lineman. Yeah, I'd like to say the far side official had it at the line of scrimmage, and then they moved it back a half a step. Again, second quarter action. We're clock continuing to run, getting closer to halftime. Five and a half minutes to play. Here in the second quarter, and the Buffs leading by three touchdowns. Okoye over the left side. 
breaks through, and I think with that last lunge, Man. has enough for a first down. He's kind of running, you know, with a reckless abandonment a little bit tonight. Once he gets to the second level, yeah. then he finds almost like a second gear. Really like what we've seen from McCoy tonight. They fake it to him. Gerber rolls, throws, a little behind the receiver, but give credit to Shaq Brown for still making the catch, gain of about six yards. Yeah, that was a nice job to adjust his body to come back to the football and pull that one in. After that throw, Nick is 8 of 14 passing for one touchdown. Also has a rushing touchdown as well. Compton's in at running back. They fake it to Jared. Pass down the far side of the field. And Hunter Kaufman made an incredible catch. Touchdown, Buffaloes. What an adjustment by Hunter Kaufman. It, it, and a perfect throw from Nick Gerber. He threw it the only place really where Kaufman could come into it. And then Kaufman adjusts his body, turns back to the football. In then the concentration. Turns and keeps his eyes on it, then comes back <laughs> yes. and turns away from the defender to pull that in for the score. And he does the right thing. He takes his helmet off when he gets the to the sideline. Side yes, right. perfect. Like you got to practice those things. Gage Urias will come on, attempt the extra point, and WT is going to go up 28 nothing. No hangover wow. following the loss last wow. week to Western Oregon, and you're getting plays like this. Watch this just body control. Hoffman turns back away. We didn't quite get there with the camera, but he turned back away from the defender to look at the football, saw it fall in his arms, and then pulls it in for the score. Nicely done. Buffs lead it by four touchdowns. Still 4.27 to play in the first half. We're back after this quick 30-second timeout. This is a walk-on athlete. They train long, put their heart into the game. This is the passion we're built on. It's why we put our heart into creating game day. With the taste of Louisiana. Walk-ons, we live for this. Hang on. Welcome back to Bain Schaefer Buffalo Stadium. The Buffaloes capitalize. They score again. Nick Gerber hooking up with Hunter Kaufman. That was Hunter's first touchdown catch this season, and it is 28 0 all West Texas AM. Central Washington still, obviously, so much time still left in this game, but the Wildcats and Chris Fisk, uh, Bryce, we talked about it in pregame. They, they control their own destiny. Yep. You win out, you're going to make the playoffs. Yeah. It had to start here tonight on the road against West Texas A&M, and they just have not shown up so far. And, again, we still have another half to play, still 427 of the second quarter. But the Buffs have done the right things so far tonight, putting enough pressure on the running game, not really allowing them to get anything going uh, in the rushing category at all tonight. And so they made them throw the football. On first down, Henderson. A hard run. That was all running back there. He yeah. broke a tackle. Ty Dillon frustrated. Oh, man. Came up and tried to wrap up Henderson, but it's it's hard to do. But if you're WT, you're still okay with that. That was a really hard run for Henderson, Bryce. They only gained three or four yards. No, absolutely. And, again, Ty Dillon slowed him up, so that allowed everybody else to kind of converge and move over there and be able to pull, pull up even with him and then make the stop. Hunter all smiles over on the sideline. I remember two seasons ago he transferred from Kansas, and that was a 28-yard touchdown that he hauled in from Nick Gerber. Gerber now 9 of 15, 97 yards and two touchdowns. They fake it to the running back. Lemming keeps it and shows he's got some wheels as well and runs all the way so down near midfield. Before that, Chris Thomas saw something, wanted to call a timeout because somebody wasn't set up. He wanted to move some people over to the far side of the field. He couldn't get anybody to move. He, he signaled timeout. Officials didn't see it, and they snapped the ball. And so, uh, But also the quarterback has gone out because... Near midfield. Something Before that, Chris kind of got him off. I don't know if it was the helmet timeout. or if the headband came off. So he's he got the, the locks and there, right? I think they right? took a timeout. I think it was right. Timeout. Central Washington. Their first yeah. of the half. 30 okay. second timeout. So Central Washington takes the timeout. Buffs leading 28 0 over the Wildcats. Central Washington, 334 but, still to work with. But that the, their biggest play of the night so far, and that's on a quarterback keeper. 
that was kind of just misplayed by the Buffaloes. You see Hunter right there talking to his defense a little bit because they saw something. They just didn't adjust to it quick enough. Yeah, Lemming is your leading rusher for the Wildcats at 16 yards rushing. Trajan Henderson, 10 carries, 14 yards. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. They're Buffs the defensive leading, line and, the, and linebackers, yeah, wow. Yeah, averaging over 100 yards a ball game, and right now they've got him locked up, so that's great for the defense. And really, for the Buffs here in the first half, it's been a complete game by that meeting. Special teams has come out, played big. The defense has been big, and obviously the offense has played well. Journey Canyon Coffee is a proud supporter of WT Athletics. Stop in or drive through for your favorite hot or iced drink. Thank you so much for your continued support of our athletes. That's Journey Canyon Coffee. I know you like your sweet tea, Bryce, but <laughs> you, you, you're coffee guy too, right? On occasion, yes. Okay. I do. Here's a handoff. Henderson running hard up the middle, one of his better runs, into Buffalo territory down to about the 47-yard line. Second time they've been in Buffalo territory, and the first time was because of a punt into the wind that went out of bounds. And so this is the first time the offense has generated enough to get into Buffalo territory tonight. As we get closer to halftime, reminder that we will have a sideline interview with Kent Johnson uh, and Hunter Hughes and expect that Coach Hughes is going to be pretty happy about what he's seen so far in the first half. We'll get a performance from the WT band and then also a chance, uh, Bryce, you had a chance to talk to the athletic director, Michael McBroom, and we'll catch that interview as well. Henderson runs up the middle. Good yardage, enough to move the sticks. First down Central Washington. This drive here, the best one we've seen since that earlier drive. Absolutely. And so, again, you got your your strongest running back who now goes out. But, again, Henderson had a, just a big gash on a, dry, on a dive that time. Picked up seven to pick up the first down. Central now has 70 total yards, 76 total yards of offense. WT, 203. Hand off to Cameron Daniels, going nowhere. Ajaye came up. Chris Thomas cleaned it up after Ajaye was the first linebacker through, and that one the Buffs knew from the get-go. Well, they, they were able to stack him up. They show only a yard loss, but it really it looked like almost a two-yard loss as he really didn't get anywhere positive, and so that makes it second and 11 on that run as they try to get to the outside. And, again, the Buffs defense have done a nice job kind of throwing their run game off kilter a bit. Second down and 11 for Lemming and the Wildcats. Low snap. Lemming throw, catch made. And a big run after the catch as popped right at the 35-yard line. The Buffs have a defender go down. Is that Carson Otworth? It is. Yeah. He came in, but it was just a timeout. Injury timeout. Yeah, DeMonte Horton, the receiver, much bigger than Otworth, and Otworth caught the, the tougher end of that play. We'll step aside real quick for a timeout. We'll come back, and it'll be third down and short here for Central Washington. Buffs leading 28-0, 143 left before halftime. 1910, WT and the Department of Agricultural Sciences has provided high-quality education to the students of the Panhandle and beyond. At WT, professors know me and are committed to my success. If you want to get an ag industry job, WT is where you need to be. I don't want just a job and a paycheck after graduation. I want a career where I can make a difference. WT invested in my career. I intend to pay it forward. Energy is a glowing sphere of hot gas. It's an ocean of air. And at Excel Energy, we make it safe. It's why we train first responders, help you identify where utility lines are buried. Uh, sir, do not dig there. And it's why we study the flight paths of majestic golden eagles before we build a wind farm. Safer energy, people. It's all part of a carbon-free 2050. You, us, together.
there's Carson. Welcome back to Bain Shaver Stadium. Carson Otwell walks off the field. Yeah, Artworth last week, Bryce, eight tackles, had an interception on the road in the loss against Western Oregon uh, on the season, 37 tackles, a fumble recovery, and an interception. And so he goes out, and the Buffs look like they're going to bring number 28, Freddie Simmons, in at safety. Again, a lot of injuries. Buffs' Preston Stazuski uh, still leads the team with four interceptions. He has been out for the last three weeks with an injury. It's third down and four for Lemming. With Henderson in the backfield, they throw it, catch made, and I don't know if they got that first down. I think, huh? I think they got it. It's going to be short. They'll go for it here, though, with 1.15 left to play in the quarter. That was Marcus so Cook making the catch. They'll be about a yard short. And so they've got to get up to the 31 to have the first down. They're at market at the 32. Well, the Buffs have been good you know, at times stopping the run. In this first half, they've held Henderson down. The running back that averages 102 rushing yards per game. Lemming goes under center, hands off to Henderson. He's got the first down. That was a nice hole that opened up. And they move the sticks. He's down to the 27-yard line. Well, he's their workhorse. He really is. And so, again, when you had a short yardage situation, that's the guy you want to go to. And so you anticipate he's going to pick up two, if not three, and so he did a nice job picking up the first down. Under a minute to play. Central Washington still with two timeouts remaining, but they're not in any hurry. Surprise they're taking this long. Right. I mean, milking this play clock. They got to go. Lemming will throw, and he overshoots the Almost receiver. Almost intercepted. It was Mizutani. He was open on the inside, but that pass was thrown where he could not get to it. A little slant up the up and in basically for for the receiver and Ty Dillon read at that time. He kind of slid over and really the pass was closer to him than it was more to the receiver on that play. Again, just 40 seconds left in the half. And Buffs lead it 28 nothing over Central Washington. Wildcats, man, they if they could get a score before halftime, it would uh, mean a lot in terms of their confidence in the second half. Lemming will throw this ball, and it was a bullet pass that went right through the hands of Caden Hammond. And he had him wide open. I mean, he, didn't he, was, have to by, throw it that hard, did he, he was by himself out there. Nobody had wheeled. It was an old wheel route. Nobody had really recovered to go cover him. And if he, yeah, if he didn't rifle it, <laughs> that would have been a... And that, that's hard for me to say that, Bryce, because when I played, I was a receiver, and to me, I was taught if it hits your hands, you need to catch it. Sure. But, but you're right. The quarterback could have put some touch on that ball. Yeah, that one was just, I mean, rifled to him. So it's third and ten. Buffs jumped. This could be a free play here for the Wildcats. So Lemming just throws it into the air. It's incomplete, but I think this is going to be a penalty. Yeah, it will be against the Buffs. They're off sides, and so – will mark off the five-yard penalty. Offside, number 51 of the defense, five-yard penalty. Repeat, third down. So, again, they mark off the five. They still have five they've got to get here on the third down. Was your head referee, Kenny Kalarik, on the call there. The clock stopped right now, 29 seconds to play. Here in quarter number two, Henderson's the running back, set to the right. As J.J. Lemming surveys the defense, three-man front for WT. They don't blitz. The ball was tipped and caught by Lemming. He can run that, and he does. Right back to the line of scrimmage <laughs> for no gain. So that is a completed pass well, to yourself. Timeout, Central Washington. They're second uh, of the I half, a 30-second timeout. Central Washington, but Bryce, we've seen just about <laughs> everything in terms of wacky plays and just bad bounces for a team on the road here in the first half. And, then, and I'll go back again. The Buffs didn't travel well to Western Oregon. They have a tough time going up there and playing. They've done it two years in a row. Central Washington, the last time they played here, didn't play well. And here they are again, a long road trip. They've got to come and get ready for this nighttime ball game. And sometimes I just think your your clock doesn't catch up with where you need to be. But at the same time, what coaches will say, Bryce, is you want, you want to win championships, yep. you got to go on the road and you got to be the That's, same team 
you're absolutely if not right. better. You're absolutely right, because if you get in the playoffs, and again, this team was in the playoffs a year ago, so you do have to go somewhere. They didn't get to play at home. They had to go on the road in the playoffs, and so in order to do so, you got to be able to travel well. And so right now, I, I'm really going to give more credit to the Buffs just playing harder this oh, yeah. evening, off to a good start, and in Central Washington just kind of taking them a while to get something going. I want to thank Kenny Dean, State Farm, for being a proud partner of WT Athletics for great service and great rates. Call Kenny Dean, State Farm. So fourth down and five now for the Wildcats. Lemming in the gun. Looks left, pressure coming, and that ball overthrown, and that is all credit to West Texas A&M. They brought some pressure right up the gut in the face of the quarterback. Number 92 shooting through for the Buffs, Sean Gordon. And he came flying in there, too. I mean, and so, again, Buffs get it turned over on downs. And so the Buffaloes will take over with 16 seconds left. Well, Bryce, how about, oh, I'm sorry, I read the wrong 92. Yeah, that was Ashton Reynolds. I yeah. apologize. Yeah. Ashton, the sophomore out of Houston. And yeah. Uh, he, he is a playmaker. He has had injury issues, but when he gets in there, he can really make a difference, and uh, he forced Lemming's pass to be thrown too early. The Buffs are going to just take a knee, and they are also going to take a four-score lead Man. into the locker room at halftime. What an impressive showing Absolutely. by the Buffaloes. What can Hunter Hughes find, though, with our sideline interview <laughs> here uh, with Kent Johnson? What can he find to say, well, we got to do a better job? <laughs> well, uh, the thing he talks about a lot, obviously, is one, jumping out to a good start. Buffs yeah. did that tonight. The other thing is we've got to, you know, score touchdowns, not field goals. We've, everything's been a touchdown tonight for the Buffaloes. And so right now you got to feel good about the way your team's playing. And so as we await Ken Johnson well, and, of course, Hunter Hughes making his way down there as well. 200, unofficially 201 total yards of offense for WT, just 90 for Central Washington. And so, so Ken Johnson down on the sideline getting set as Hunter Hughes makes his way over to visit with Kent. And so hopefully we got a happy Hunter Hughes. And let's head down to the sideline. And here's Kent Johnson. Kent. don't quit at 5 p.m. We don't quit until the job's done either. Bankers hours don't apply at First United Bank because we believe ag lending isn't a nine to five job. While you're out working the fields or managing the herd, we're making sure your money is working too. Whether it's for livestock, land, or equipment, we're one of the most dominant ag lenders in the state. And I've been burning the midnight oil since 1907. First United Bank, we know ag lending, we know ag. Since 1933, the Panhandle Plains Historical Museum has housed the vast history of Panhandle Plains, given back to the community, and provided educational resources to those who live here. Located on the campus of West Texas A&M University, PPHM is free to all students, faculty, and staff at WT. We offer volunteer opportunities, internships, and hands-on research experience. From prehistoric times to pioneer travels, there's something for everyone at the largest history museum in Texas. Stop by and see us sometime. Oh, and don't forget, go Buffs! When you choose natural gas, chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. Towels get fluffier. Showers stay hotter for longer. And our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, 
Nothing else could be more American. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. So they made them through.
Michael. Rice, good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Well, here we are, fully into fall, and you've got teams right now that are just doing phenomenally well. So far. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you don't want to drink. I don't want to jinx it. I understand that. But yeah, talk about this fall, how it's kicked off and how things have gone. Yeah, you know, it's been, uh, I, I feel like this is the first fall that we're fully out of COVID, which yeah. has been, that, that's kind of been required. Like, well, I remember what this feels like now. The, yeah. the players and the coaches is the same thing. We're traveling normal. We're not, not doing the testing. We're, you know, we're getting beat up and having to run people in different, you know, different yeah. kind of depth charts and stuff like that. And at the end of the day, winning a lot of the games we're playing. So those are all really good things. And your attendance and fan support is back to where we were in 2019, which is another great thing. Right. And so that's kind of that barometer, too. You got everybody's comparing to 2019 because of everything that's happened right. years in between. So from a positive standpoint, that's good to be back with those numbers, I guess. From the future look standpoint, what do you want to do to grow those numbers a little bit more? In terms of attendance and yes. things like that? Yes. Yeah, you know, I think we've, we're back... Yeah, as, a, as an administrative staff, we're back to full strength, right. which we haven't had in three years. So we have full grown uh, marketing crew. We brought our corporate salespeople back in house. We'd, we'd outsource it for a period of time. Right. You know, what I've seen since we've done that about six months ago is we have a lot more synergy in the office, a lot more ideas. So, what, I, what you'll see us doing is more engagement with students. Uh, you know, the retention at WT from freshman to sophomore year is at like a 40-year high this year. Oh, wow. Um, and, and part of that is, one, you know, the faculty's done a great job in getting re-engaged with students from the offline. Where you're doing your stuff online, now you're sure. back in person. That sure. certainly helps. Um, but from our standpoint, more contests, more promotions, more games. And I think everything fuels off of the students. The adults, the old people like you and I, they'll take, you know, we're the same boat, I'm fine. I'm fine. But we have more fun when we see young yeah. people having yes. fun, right? So the goal is to get more students at the games, and we're seeing that so far this year. Students are making up 25 or 50 percent of our attendance figures, right. which is phenomenal for right. us, and goes again back to the 2019 right. 2020. Right. You know, one of the things that always takes place, too, is the continual growth. And there are a lot of different avenues that you have as far as growth is concerned. But when you kind of look at where you're at right now and some of the phases that you have going on as far as the teams themselves or, more importantly, maybe facilities, what, what are you looking at right now as far as growth and what's coming down the road? So a couple of things. On the facility side, uh, we're in the pre-construction phase of the some expansions, there'll be meeting rooms for all the teams, random hall of champions, the New York style circuit to watch games, we'll have watch parties, and we have access to the next day. Uh, and we partnered with Kids Inc. Uh, with a project that's going to be kind of right there on the boot. Right. Um, the indoor piece of that, the indoor track, that's the one we were interested in for, from our competitive standpoint, the indoor track. Uh, we believe in Amarillo will drive a lot of tourism dollars and, and revenue for that facility and the community that for us it allows us to compete without traveling, which is a huge benefit to us. And so we're gonna we're gonna be a financial player in that and we're excited about that. Um, probably you know internally the big things for us and what I have on my my radar we need to strengthen our sports medicine staff with additional uh, additional staffing. Um, sports medicine and athletic performance are state side. That's the backbone of everything we can do. And with all the new requirements with sports medicine on it, we, we need to add a few more staff members. So I'd like to, to bolster that up so we can give even greater service to our student athletes. Our question too, as we've talked about the fall and how things have been going, you also have winter fall. You get into the land, yeah. basketball and everything else. And so how do you get all the parts and pieces to work with all sports action going on right now? Well, right now, from October 15th through uh, the 1st of December, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a rough go. Yeah. Uh, or, or fun, one of the two. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll have everybody playing yeah. at one point or another. And we're sad when one of the fall sports season ends, but right. the other aspect of that is, well, it's freed up and we can do that. We have, a, we have a similar window in February or right. March as the right. spring sports keep going and basketball still going. So right. it's not like we're... We're not used to it. We're kind of built to do it. Uh, but it is a tribute to our staff that your know, long hours um, are okay. Uh, 
I, I hope that I, stress, I hope that they take time for themselves. So we have some downtime this week. It's been a pretty quiet week, and I've got a lot of people around the office. And, uh, <laughs> but this next stretch that we're coming up on here, with, uh, potentially hosting volleyball championships and soccer playoffs, and you, know, uh, you never know what happens with football. Uh, we're in a good place right now. But, you know, if we went out, I think we have a really good shot, and uh, I think we have a chance to win. So, of course, it, we take it game by game. Sure, sure. It's a busy time. One of the best athletic directors in the country, in my opinion, Michael McBurn. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks. WT student-athletes drink low-fat chocolate milk post-workout because it helps replenish and restore muscles quickly to their peak potential. Scientific studies suggest that the immediate benefits of low-fat chocolate milk include boosted performance, improved training, and higher recovery rates in athletes. Add low-fat chocolate milk to your post-workout routine. And welcome back to the halftime show again. Buffaloes lead this one over Central Washington 28 to nothing. Now, we had a little glitch just before we went into the locker room with Kent getting the chance to talk to Hunter Hughes. I'm going to let you kind of summarize what Hunter was saying out there. He was as positive as a football <laughs> coach could be when the game is only half over. And yes. he said, we've still got another half to go. But right. the Buffs are playing solid on both sides of the line. Uh, he praised the senior quarterback, Nick Gerber, for his ability to read what uh, Central Washington's giving him. Opening the game with Tyler Sweet's 91-yard kickoff return, setting up uh, a beautiful run-pass option by Nick. He, right. he kept it, had me completely fooled on who had the football, <laughs> and I was down at that end of the field. And then on the uh, – your defense gives you a short field again on the interception. Right. And then uh, Nick with the play action pass and the, the touchdown toss, you get up 14 nothing before you played five minutes. Defense only allows one drive, and it didn't turn into points, but as Coach Hughes said, that was one drive too many. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. A defensive-minded sure. coach. Sure. But really, in all phases, the Buffs have played good. Uh, you know, one thing that we were talking about, you and I, before we went on camera, the discipline of the Buffs tonight, right. just two penalties in the right. first half. Right. You know, that's a big thing, too, tonight. Uh, it is, obviously, every game. But the other thing, too, this is kind of the medicine that they need coming back from that Western Oregon trip. Again, two road games, so they were over at uh, Wichita Falls, come away with a win, and then but the Western Oregon kind of came back, kind of sleepwalked through that one in the second half. And so that's the key, I think, right now. Come out in the second half here, come out ready to go. Maintain the momentum that you had right. in the first half. You know, right. stats are only as good as the paper they're printed on. Right. The Buffs with just over 200 yards in the first half. Uh, Central Washington with just under 100 yards in the half. Time of possession is virtually even, <laughs> but the scoreboard shows the Buffs being up 28 nothing. You know, the big key, too, I think, is the Buff defense limiting what Central Washington can, can do with the run. And so they come in with Henderson over 100 yards per ball game. They've been able to, I mean, he's had a couple of pushes, yep. but they've been able to contain him for the most part. Yeah, we were expecting a strong power running game by Trajan Henderson, and the Buffs have really contained him. And in doing that, they are forcing Central Washington's hand with the passing game, which is really being ineffective. Yeah, and the Buffs need to continue that as well. Ken, we appreciate it. Thanks for coming up here and joining us here on the halftime recap of what the first half looks like. And so what we want to do is take a quick 30-second timeout. We'll do so and come back after this on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network.
We know that egg producers don't quit at 5 p.m. We don't quit until the job's done either. Bankers hours don't apply at First United Bank because we believe egg lending isn't a nine to five job. While you're out working the fields or managing the herd, we're making sure your money is working too. Whether it's for livestock, land, or equipment, we're one of the most dominant egg lenders in the state and have been burning the midnight oil since 1907. First United Bank, we know egg lending, we know egg. Welcome back to Bain Schaefer Stadium. The Buffaloes have made their way out. So to is Central Washington as we get set for our second half of play. Again, the Buffs lead this one 28 to nothing. Central Washington will receive the kickoff to start the second half. And so again, the Buffaloes have done such a nice job taking advantage of situations tonight. Again, as they started out in this one this evening, they got a 92 yard kickoff return for the Buffs to begin the ball game. And again, thanks in part to a great run by Tyler Sweet. Set up the buffs in two plays. They were able to take it in for the score. And they led 7-0 on the Nick Garber eight-yard scamper. And the very next play after the kickoff is signed Schuber with an interception. And the buffs go on a 10-play 45-yard drive. And they cap that off with a touchdown. That's 14-0 on a 12-yard pass to Chris Sims. And then when 9.30 left to play in the second quarter, the Buffs got an 18-yard run by Brian Okoye. They go up 21 to nothing. That capped a nine-play, 69-yard drive. And then Hunter Kaufman just with a beautiful reception in the end zone, a 28-yard pass reception from Nick Gerber. And that's where the Buffs are, 28 to nothing. The Buffs 201 yards in the first half to 90 for uh, Central Washington. 97 passing yards for the buff, but more importantly, 104 yards rushing. And, and we talked about the run game. When If the run game is there, oh, yeah. then it's a balanced offense for the Buffaloes. And that's exactly 104 yards rushing, 97 yards passing. And again, as Kent talked about, no penalties, really two penalties for each squad. And so the buffs being able to take advantage of not only a, an interception, also a fumble recovery. And so they've been able to take those miscues and kind of turn them into offensive gold for the for the Buffaloes tonight. And so again, the Buffs lead at 28 to nothing here at the half. As the fans are ready, you can see there on the screen, they're ready for this second half to get underway. And as Ken talked about, this is exactly what Hunter Hughes wanted for the first half was to get out to a good start. It really is, Bryce, and for Central Washington, I think we're going to find out really quickly here in this third quarter. I mean, uh, their season's on the line right now yep, yep. In, in terms of any uh, playoff hopes that, that they have because if they lose tonight, you know, you, you go from, okay, if they won tonight, hey, we've got a lot of confidence. Yes. Bring on Kingsville. Bring on Angela State. You lose this game, and you go, oh, we still got to play those teams that were above us in the conference standings. And Kingsville right now is getting run by Angelo State, so yeah. you'll have a team that will have revenge on their mind, so to speak, as they go and take on the Central Washington team, and then Angelo State after that. And so, again, that could change some fortunes here in the conference. Yeah, we'll, uh, here in just a little bit, we'll look at the uh, Lone Star Conference scoreboard. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. Is uh, talked about Angelo State and Texas A&M Kingsville. First, we'll give you the final score from Monmouth, Oregon. Those Wolves, we talked a lot about them in pregame. Yeah. They uh, they take care of business today. Western Oregon wins over Eastern New Mexico, 46 to seven. So a big win there for Western Oregon. And then uh, what do you got over there, Bryce? Angelo's up 27 to seven with 4:39 left to play in the third quarter. So they haven't changed their scoring in that one from the half. But again, it's it's 27-7 Angelo State. And we'll try to get you a score on UT Permian Basin and Midwestern State, that game uh, over in Odessa. Right now, our game into the third quarter, the kickoff from Urias. A great boot that uh, Central Washington is not going to be able to bring out. And if you are the Wildcats offensively, it looks like they're going to come out and they're going to stay with the quarterback number 16, J.J. Uh, uh, J. Lemming. Yeah. And, again, going back to the start of the game, <clears throat> there were some miscues. 
uh, that were made from Quincy Glasper, but there were also some plays to, to kind of give him a little bit of a break. Oh, yeah. His receivers dropped some, they, some balls. Absolutely. They absolutely dropped some nice passes that he threw. So on first down, they motion the running back out of the backfield. The throw is a good one and a catch made for a nice eight-yard gain there. Strike to number 19, the catch made by DeMonte Horton. Again, they're going to do that. that. They've ran that same pattern before. Send a man in motion that comes to the near side. That kind of brings a cornerback over and it leaves Horton on a safety. And so you, there's a little bit of flexibility there with the safety, so you got some room to complete that pass. Buffs walk the linebacker up on the outside. That is Braylon Sugg, number 49. The run goes up the middle. No, they fake it, and it's a throw. Good throw. And did the receiver, All down, yes, yeah. he did, but he made the catch. That was a yeah. great fake. I was watching the, the running back there, and it was a pass that was thrown across the middle. So two good throws here to start this third quarter, a good sign from J.J. Lemming. And, again, what I was saying with Central Washington is, are they going to come out and you know have a quick scoring drive and well, say, "Hey, let's let's get back in this game"? Well, you, you and that's how you have to approach it. You only can do that one sport at a time. So anticipate that he's going to be throwing a lot. Don't anticipate the run too much here as he tries to get it up the field. Good play action again. The throw on the outside that is a tough throw to make, and it's too high over the intended receiver's head. Incomplete. Second down and ten. Central Washington. Again, it was out on the flat in the near side, and so just too high trying to find his receiver. Buffs reacted nicely defensively. They would have had that one uh, wrapped up should that pass have been caught. Fleming, 6 of 12 for 41 yards. Western New Mexico taking on Simon Frazier. The last score we had 14-0 Mustangs leading. Lemming with a nice Keep quarterback it. keeper. Yeah, picks up a block, dives forward. He's close to the first down marker, going to be taken down about a yard short. And now this adds a dimension for Central Washington, with, which is actually surprising. You see Lemming, he's tall, 6'6", 220 pounds. More of a passer, right, is yeah. what we thought. But So really the starting quarterback tonight, Glasper, is the one that kind of takes off. you got to respect his speed. But, again, just like Nick Gerber, let me give you something. Oh, the Buffs read that one and for a big sack for a loss, or a big stop for a loss. Yeah, they, th they throw Henderson back for a loss of about three yards. Lemming really didn't get the handoff. As soon as he was there, so too was the Buff defense to come up and make the stop. So fourth down, no question about it, trailing 28-0. Central Washington head coach Chris Fisk says we're going for it. And I think flag. they got the buffs to jump. Yeah, flag. The receiver not even looking back, and so the ball falls incomplete. But flag. did this penalty go against the buffs? It did. Yeah. It was fourth and four, so that penalty makes it first down Central Washington. And go back to what Kent was talking about in our halftime conversation. Offside. You know, the buffs have been Number good. Number 10 of the defense. 90 yard penalty. Yardage just sufficient for a first down. Two offsides defensively. And so you're anticipating the snap count. You kind of read the quarterback. You kind of got to get an idea what his count is going to be, so you're trying to anticipate it. And that's two times they've been caught offsides. One thing we have not seen from Central Washington is that, that big play, that big play down the field, whether it's pass or run, to kind of open things up and get them going. Right now they have first and 10 at the Buffs 38-yard line, opening drive here in the third period. In trouble, quarterback escapes and is running Try to pick up as much as he can. Good pursuit from Ashton Reynolds as he chases J.J. Lemming out of bounds. Still Lemming able to pick up decent yardage. Gained about four yards. You know, that's interesting there. That quarterback being chased by a defensive end and going back to the old days, you would have said, They would have ran away from him, but again... Defensive players are getting so quick, so speedy, and a good, good angle that time. And that's Ashton Reynolds, sophomore out of Houston. On the second down and six play, Henderson started right, had to cut back inside, and Chris Thomas comes up along with Goo, Antonio uh, for the Buffaloes, Antonio Iwuagu, defensive lineman. But uh, that play initiated, Bryce, from number 35, Daniel Ajaye. 
freshman linebacker out of Plano. He's, yeah. he's making lots of plays tonight. Yeah, again, stepping in to a couple, again, injuries are a problem, so he's stepping in, done some nice work there. Scotland Vice, the center, is the one that led on that. He fought through it and was able to make the stop. The way Chris Thomas at halftime had six tackles, so he moved up into fifth place past Carter James on the all-time tackles list. This pass thrown caught on the outside, a big pop from Ty Dillon after the catch was made by Peyton Glazer. Well, Ty Dillon saying he was short. Well, However, Ty, the Ty official, Dillon's not wearing the stripes, yeah, though. Yeah, the official <laughs> on the other side say move the chains, and so they get to move the chains and pick up the first down. Ty's had a great season this year, Bryce, a <laughs> sophomore from Round Rock, second leading tackler on the team and uh, has three interceptions. He uh, is a player that has just worked so hard. Uh, not a big kid. No, not. And, and he's undersized, really. Yeah, 5'9", 165 pounds. But fights through it and really gives you everything he has. So first down, Wildcats. They continue the drive. Lemming across the middle, overshoots, and nearly oh, throws man. an interception. He threw it so hard that uh, Freddie Simmons couldn't uh, hang on to that ball. And it was really more to Freddie Simmons than the intended target on that one, Six which was De Devontae Horton. DeMonte and DeMonte almost was able to pull that in on the ricochet. Watch this here. Had he been looking, that would have fallen maybe into his arms. So we're saying that uh, velocity is not an issue it's for, not, for quarterback J.J. Lemming. It's not. He may pitch on the side for their baseball team. I don't know. But, again, he really has a good fastball. Well, luckily for the Wildcats, it's incomplete. Second down and 10. Henderson up the middle. And again, not much there. The Buffs stop him for just a gain of two. First man through for WT defensively was number 40, Cole Oster. And then Chris Thomas in help wrap that one up as well. And so, again, linebackers playing well in this one tonight for the Buffaloes. And good credit, Central Washington. They come out, take the opening kickoff. They ran almost five minutes off the clock here on this drive. So third down and long in. Central Washington needing to pick up this first down. Of course, if they don't make it, they'll stay, stay on the field and go for it on fourth down. Lemming across the middle. Catch made, and this will be a first down. Wide open across the middle. Good catch, and then run after the catch from Logan Brady, his second reception tonight. Yeah, again, zone coverage that time for the Buffalo, so Brady does the smart thing, goes up, finds a soft spot in the zone, turns around, shows his numbers to the quarterback, and makes that pass completion. He almost tripped himself up trying to advance up the field, but he still caught the football for a first down. So the Wildcats, second time tonight that they've been in the red zone. First time it resulted in a fumble. It was a devastating turnover back in the first quarter. They're on a nice drive right now, though, to start this third quarter. Henderson weaves up the middle, lost the ball. ball and came I, free. I, it did. Let's see what they're saying. What are they saying? Are they saying he was down, or is that, is that going to be a turnover? WT came out with the football, but I think the officials are saying that Henderson was down. And really, I think when we look at it on the review, he probably okay. was. And so, again, it was one of those, again, just bang, bang play, but we believe Henderson was down. And so he picked up about two on that carry. You think this WT defense isn't like just sharks out for blood I here? Think they, they really are. And again, they're doing a nice job trying to strip the ball away whenever anybody catches it or runs with it. Two-yard run on the last play for Trajan Henderson. New running back in the game, Cameron Daniels. They're going to pass here, though. And this one incomplete. That would have been a really difficult catch as the tight end was covered. Great coverage uh, by Sign Shuva. Yeah, Shuva did a nice job as he kind of play, he plays him perfectly. He's behind the receiver. As he sees the ball comes in, he reaches around and kind of taps it down. And so that allows, does not allow for the completion. Here's the matchup on that last <laughs> pass play. Peyton Glazer, the tight end, is 6'5", 210. Sign Shuva is not 6'5", 210. No. He's 5'9", 170. Yeah, yeah. I think if I'm the quarterback lemming there, I throw it up. I, yes. Here's third and long, and it's incomplete. Trying to go to Mizutani up the middle, and again, the Buffs brought pressure in the face of the quarterback, and when they have done that, those passes have sailed over the head of the receivers. So now fourth down, do you go ahead and kick this one to get some points? I think that's what they're going to do here. They bring the kicker on, Jude, Jude Millette. 
Uh, Millette, excuse me, 6'2", 170-pound redshirt freshman from Vancouver, and Washington. He, he's kicking into the wind here, so or kicking with that cross breeze. This is a 27-yard field goal try. And it is good for the Wildcats. So they start the third quarter, take a lot of time off the clock, but come up with just a field goal and cut the Buffaloes' lead down to 28-3. West Texas A&M leads 8.40 to play. Third quarter action here from Bain Schaefer Buffalo Stadium. We're back after these messages on the LSC Digital Network. It's got the looks, the style, the performance. Your new car is everything you always dreamed of, and now it's here. First Financial Bank was happy to help put you behind the wheel with a new car loan at a competitive rate and fast, friendly, local approval. It's service that just comes naturally to us, much like a love of tradition comes naturally to you. First Financial Bank, you first. Member FDIC. Welcome back to Shane uh, Schaefer, Bay Schaefer Stadium as uh, Central Washington completes a 15-play drive that covers 65 yards. Took six minutes, 20 seconds off the clock here to start the third quarter. That, that guy's going for the Astros, Bryce. And they that, that buff in. He's, he's going for the Astros. They settle for a 27-yard field goal. They buffs still lead at 28-3. And also in attendance tonight, Superman. Uh, it is Superhero, Superhero night. night. Yep. Yep. My, uh, my son, 12-year-old son, was uh, heading to the tailgate tonight with friends. and uh, Spider-Man? He was dressed as Spider-Man. Nice. Nice. Right now the Buffs leading well, by 25 points. You know, one of our keys of the game is come out in the second half, come out ready to go. So the defense, I think, did their job. They stopped a nice drive. And here's the return for Tyler Sweet waiting for a hole to open up, and it never did. <laughs> they had one message that was given to them when they came out of the locker room. If number nine catches it, do not let him get free. Yeah, that's how Sweet, they, Sweet started the game off with a 92-yard kickoff return. That set up an easy touchdown. converged on him. But, again, now the Buffs offense needs to come out kind of get established, kind of establish, you know, a little bit of what they want to do, their identity here in the second half because the second half has been trouble for the Buffs this season far as scoring points is concerned. It really has. You know, we looked at that, Bryce, uh, WT being outscored in the third quarter, 60-38 to 38 by their opponents, 51-43 in fourth quarters. I tell you what, Okoye continues uh, what he did in the first half, running through tacklers, gains five yards on first down there. I, and he's only a freshman. I know, and that's the thing. He, he was trying to get to the outside. He's a big back. And so they like his size. And so, again, he got to the outside. He was, he was trying to get it to where he had one man to, to beat. Yeah. And then he was off to the races. Second down play. McCoye takes it again. This time goes over the left side. Runs hard again. He's going to be stopped after a gain of two. Gang tackled. A couple of the players there. Brett Akamas, one of the senior linebackers. Got two really solid senior linebackers. Akamas and then also Dayon Hudson. He was recruited over to Central Washington from the state of Ohio. Wow, that's a long way to go to get a player. So, Third down and short. They call it third and two. Gerber hands it to Jared Compton. Compton running hard. Did he get enough? He looked like he got the spot on the near side. The far yeah, side official did not give it to but him. But the though. near side official is, and he's saying move the chain. Okay. So first nice down. first down, Jared Compton. It looked like he got to the 30-yard line and then got pushed back. Nice run by Jared. Buffalo's as a team now at 114 rushing yards. Central Washington just 70. And they'll go with Compton over the left side. That was a beautiful play down the line, Bryce. Big number, 96 for Central Washington. Give credit to Josiah Cochran. We mentioned his name a lot. Josiah he was Cochran being blocked, yeah. and he just continued to work up the field, kept his angle, and made a great tackle. Yeah, he read the lane that time. The Buffs tried to overload it on the short side of the field, and they just, they just read it perfectly, came in and made the stop. A loss of three on that run. Gerber will throw on second down here. The lane opens up. He runs at the 30, 35, out of bounds. Going to be short of the first down by about three yards. I, that was an attempted trip tackle. Did you see that? I did. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> stuck their foot out. And, and, and you, can, you can call him on that if you want to. Oh, and man. So, 
you know, the officials let him play as he stepped over it, got around. But again, nice pickup. And so it makes it at least third and manageable. A lot of options here for offensive coordinator Russ Martin. Okoye sets to the left, and they bring Carn Bay in motion, the tight end. Gerber throws. Good catch by Carn Bay. First down. Move the sticks. And we've talked about this before. Jeremy's having a good game tonight. Doesn't catch a lot of passes. No. But Bryce, when they throw it in his direction, he should catch it because his hands are some of the <laughs> biggest hands, I'm not kidding, in the entire country. <laughs> he told me that. He said, you know, we had, had an NFL guy come by one time, and he said they measured my hands, and the scout said, son, you may have some of the biggest hands I've ever seen. Oh, man, that was a run of only two yards, but that collision was fierce. Jalil Freeland makes the hit. On the running the football. Against Okoye, huh? Yeah. Second down and eight coming up for the Buffs. Ball right at midfield. Gerber across the middle to uh, Bogardis, great catch, and that's for a first down. That'll move the chains for Noah. That was his second catch this evening. Gerber will take this snap, fake it to his running back, going for Bogardis, who's being held the entire way right in front of the official. Wow. And then no, no call, Noah says, Look, I, at my, look at my jersey, I sir. I mean, I could see you could see that from way up here. Hunter Hughes all the way down the sideline asking why was there not a holding penalty on that. And so and just in a moment, we're going to go down to the field here and get an update from Kent Johnson, but we'll let, let this play play out. Okay, second down and 10. Fans didn't like it when they saw the replay. Hand off to Compton up the middle, kind of squeezes through traffic and picks up good yardage to the 34-yard line. All right, let's head down to the field. Kent Johnson's got an update for us. Kent, go ahead. Thanks, Bryce. Defensive back Carson Otworth from Round Rock, Texas, won't be coming back this evening to tonight's game. Concussion protocol got hit above the uh, shoulder pads. We saw him take it off. Uh, he actually walked off under his own power into the first half, but he will not be returning tonight. Back upstairs, guys. All right, here's Gerber. He'll throw across the middle, a good pass, and it's complete for another first down. This is Chris Sims that makes the catch at the 25-yard line. Thank you for the uh, update down there, KJ. And Bryce, tonight, I mean, this is really just a, a case of Nick Gerber has been phenomenal, both passing the ball and running the ball in control the entire game. Well, you said we don't want to put it on one guy, but really we had to put it on one guy to control this one tonight. Movement up front, a penalty marker flies. Gerber throws. Kenny Thread Jr. tries to make an adjustment on the ball. It sails out of bounds incomplete, but is this going to be offsides against the Wildcats? Offside, number 40 of the defense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. So, yep, another five-yard penalty for just a good mix-up for Nick Gerber. By that, I just mean he just got the snap count up. And, again, we wanted to see the Buffs come out on their first offensive set move the ball. They've done a nice job. They're within field goal range from here. Well, yeah, with the wind at their back. I was going to say, I think it depends on the wind. First down and five for the Buffaloes. Compton taking down good open field tackle by Jalil Breland. As you talk about a big, big hole opening up, it did there for Jared. If Breland doesn't make that tackle, then Jared's in the end zone. And Again, just on a nice run. He saw a good angle, took it that time, goes from right to left, and almost picks up a first down. Second down and a yard. Compton will get that yard and continue running. Gets a good push from Zane Madison, his center, down to the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal, Buffaloes. And this is just a great drive. I mean, Central Washington gets the field goal. And you and I said that, that when we went to commercial break, we'll take that yes. in terms of holding them to three. And yes. how do you get this response offensively with this drive? And again, you, well, we'll go after this play. Compton over the right side. Cut down in his tracks right at about the seven-yard line. So he picks up three. And so, again, you want a nice drive to start everything here in the second half. But really, right now, we're coming down to the three-minute mark in the quarter. We've had two series, one series from Central that ends in a field goal. Now the Buffs are answering back with a long drive of their own. 
Compton stays in at running back. Berber taking his time, watching the play clock go down under 10 seconds. Compton running hard over the right side, down to the three yard line. Yeah, nice side. Uh, right side opened up hole there by Sam Treadway, Patrick Gray, and those guys do a nice job to kind of open up a sliver for Compton to run through. Yeah, Patrick Gray, the sophomore out of San Antonio, really a lot of youth on the offensive line, three sophomores and two juniors start for WT up front. Here's third and goal from the three. Brian Okoye back on the field at running back. He gets the carry. Okoye runs hard. Did he get in? Not quite. Okay. It looked like, <laughs> looked like Nick Gerber said he got in, but the official on the sideline comes over and said, no, Jerry about a half Jerry yard Jerry short. And that's exactly what it is, about a so half yard short. Jaleel Breland and Patrick Rogers, these uh, defensive backs for Central Washington really do a good job. They come up and make a lot of tackles. And so the buffs on fourth down, they're going to go for it. This was a team vote. They were all turning yeah, to the sideline no, saying, absolutely. Coach, let's go. Let's yeah, go for absolutely. it. Absolutely. So Hunter Hughes will go for it. And Shaq Brown will go under center. Shaq just puts it up over the top and touchdown. Touchdown, oh, Buffaloes nice. from one yard out. <laughs> Again, nice job by the buffs. And so take advantage of the tools you have. Use six, what, six five, Shaq Brown, six six. And this time you let him just reach the football over well, and cut, two, break the blame. 250 pounds. And, yeah. you know, Bryce, we always said it, right? you got to feed Shaq inside the paint, right? Or inside the red zone. That's exactly right. Gage Urias will come on the field and attempt this extra point for WT. Going to make it 35-3 to if he can boot it through. Gage does. And West Texas A&M responds after the Wildcats open the second half. Timeout, 90 second media timeout. All West Texas A&M will step aside, take a timeout. Back with more football after these messages on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. That egg producers don't quit at 5 p.m. We don't quit until the job's done either. Bankers hours don't apply at First United Bank because we believe egg lending isn't a nine to five job. While you're out working the fields or managing the herd, we're making sure your money is working too. Whether it's for livestock, land, or equipment, we're one of the most dominant egg lenders in the state. And I've been burning the midnight oil since 1907. First United Bank. We know egg lending. We know egg. Since 1933, the Panhandle Plains Historical Museum has housed the vast history of Panhandle Plains, given back to the community, and provided educational resources to those who live here. Located on the campus of West Texas A&M University, PPHM is free to all students, faculty, and staff at WT. We offer volunteer opportunities, internships, and hands-on research experience. From prehistoric times to pioneer travels, there's something for everyone at the largest history museum in Texas. Stop by and see us sometime. Oh, and don't forget, go Buffs! Well, welcome back to Bain Schaefer Stadium. The Buffaloes answer back. They go on a 17-play, 80-yard drive. Shaq Brown takes it in from one yard out. That takes seven minutes and two seconds off the clock. We have had two series in this quarter, the Buffs lead at 35 to three over Central Washington. And Gage has been so good on these kickoffs tonight. And this one will not be returned again. Uh, talked about the Lone Star Conference scoreboard here in the third quarter. A couple of more updates for you, Bryce. Timeout, 90 seconds, media timeout. 23 to 21, right, at right. UTPB, right. late fourth quarter. They get the ball back. And Bill Maskell's team works some magic. The Mustangs march down the field. They kick a go-ahead field goal with nine seconds wow. left wow. and take a 24-23 lead. Looks like they're going to escape uh, Ratliff Stadium with a win. Right. Angelo State, they continue to do work. Last uh, update we had was 34-7 in that ball game. And the Rams, uh, WT saw that, you know, went on the road and played tough with Angelo State for the first half. And then the Rams right. pulled away in the second right. half. But right. 
We saw Kingsville here, and we were very impressed with Kingsville when they beat WT, and they're not even close tonight at Angelo State. Well, and the thing is with Kingsville, and again, you go back to that Kingsville game, the Buffaloes had some opportunities. They just couldn't capitalize. Credit Kingsville, they did a nice job to come away with a road victory, and that kind of set them in motion for this season to this point right now. That's why they are undefeated so far in this season. By the way, they've been able to kind of move through their, you know, their campaigns. But, uh, again, what we're seeing in the Buffaloes right now, we kind of joked about it. I don't know if we can say joked about it, but we talked about it half. That this is the team we anticipated, and this is the team that we expected for this entire season. Yeah, right? and, and it's really fun when you get to, to see WT doing what they're doing on both sides of the ball. All, all three phases, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, really, they've really controlled everything tonight. And so that's good to see. WT Athletics wants to thank Legends Canyon for being a proud sponsor of the WT Our student DJ section, who you just saw a lot of those students up there showing off their dance skills. You know, parents are proud watching uh, their students up in the stands uh, with their, their dance moves. But thank you so much for your continued support, Legends Canyon. That ball was knocked wow. loose. Great coverage. From the linebacker Braylon Sugg against the tight end for Central Washington. Braylon Laser paid that perfectly that time. He was right on the shoulder of the intended target, and then when he saw the football, he just reached out and knocked it away. Nice job. Second down play here for JJ Lemming, and the Wildcats offense. And now they know they've got to throw the ball. Got to get it down the field. That was an incredible catch, diving. And uh, keeping it from hitting the turf was Tajan uh, Mitsutani. Yeah, Mitsutani, that was kind of wide of the mark, so he just dives after it and pulls it in for the pass completion. First down, Wildcats. Low snap, Lemming handles it. Throw, and in and out of the hands of Mitsutani. Again, same thing. Similar play, right? Yeah, he has to dive after it to pull that one in, and that time he wasn't able to do it. And he, he goes over the sideline and says, hey, I need a breather. And so he's going to head out and get a bit of a breather on this one. Mitsutani has made a couple of good catches tonight. Again, for Central Washington, just the consistency. They, they have not had the, right. the offensive consistency that they've needed. Right. They'll fake it to the running back. Quarterback Lemming keeps it, picks up a block from the outside, one of his receivers, and stumbles forward for about four yards there. And that's a play that they really, to kind of ignite their run game tonight, is they let Lemming take off. He'll go to the far side of the field. He doesn't ever come to the near side. He always goes to the far side on that particular carry, on that carry, and at least gets them some running options. Sign Shuva, the defender making the tackle. He's had a great game tonight for the Buffs. Lemming, inside slant play, works to perfection. Good throw and a great catch by Marcus Cook, sophomore from Yakima, Washington. We actually went through Yakima okay. on our way to Central Washington when we were up there. Had a fun trip there to uh, Ellensburg. Yeah. Snap back to Lemming here on first down. Good protection, throw, got it batted down. I think that was Braylon Sugg that got a hand up there. And he was trying to go against three guys that time as he kind of crashes in the middle, goes in there, and then he still had the wherewithal to put his hands up and knock that pass away. Incomplete pass, stops the clock, 21 seconds to play, third quarter. All WT tonight here in uh, the home game for the Buffaloes. They bring some pressure. Chris Thomas blitzes. They pick it up, throw down the sideline, and that time the receiver did make a good adjustment on the ball, but Cook could not haul it in. Well, and again, <laughs> this, is, this is a good argument right there for Quentin Evans because he was step for step. The receiver grabbed him and threw him out of the way, and that should have been offensive pass interference. The official said, no, nobody was able to catch it. So, But, again, that, that was exactly what offensive pass interference is. So back-to-back -back incomplete passes, third down and 10. Lemming scrambling to the right, throwing on the run, and he misses his target, Mitsu, uh, Mitsutani. He has a hard time, Lemming does, when he's on the move, of really throwing a good pass. He, he gets the in the general dips. area. Yeah, it really dips quite a bit. 
In fact, when you look at it, he's 10 of 24. He has a, a quarterback rating of 70.7 .7 right now. Yeah, he's 42% uh, on his completions. Yeah. Glasper started the game. He was two for eight before he went out. And uh, again, as we talked about, the, the, not all those are on him. So <laughs> he had some passes that should have been caught. Daniel Stewart, the punter, comes on here for the Wildcats. And hit this one a high kick that Sweet will come up. And fair catch right around the 16-yard line for the Buffs. And mark him actually at right at the 15. So it's West Texas A&M leading 35-3 here over Central Washington. One second left to play here. And this, this has been a fast third quarter. Yeah. Well, you know, the Wildcats start the quarter and they go on their drive. Yep. But I, I think, you know, we go back to that and we said, do you, do you take the points, the field goal, or do you go for the touchdown looking right. back at it now? Well, yeah. I mean, I don't you know. know. Probably should have went, tried to go for a touchdown, but the Buffs didn't know that they were going to go on a seven-minute drive and then ended up in the end zone. We've got a new quarterback in for West Texas A&M. It tells you how things are going for the Buffaloes as Caleb Areola will come in and take some snaps here. He'll take one, hand it off, and Okoye goes forward for a couple of yards. That takes us to the end of the third quarter. We'll come back and finish it off here from Bain Schaefer Buffalo Stadium, West Texas A&M, an impressive display tonight. They lead 35-3 to going into quarter number four. We're back after these messages. WT student athletes drink low-fat chocolate milk post-workout because it helps replenish and restore muscles quickly to their peak potential. Scientific studies suggest that the immediate benefits of low-fat chocolate milk include boosted performance, improved training, and higher recovery rates in athletes. Add low-fat chocolate milk to your post-workout routine. Go look! Well, welcome back to Bain Schaefer Stadium as the crowd's getting set to get into this one as we head into the fourth quarter for the Buffaloes, a 35-3 to three lead. There go lights, the lights. Yeah, the lights go off, and, of course, that only can mean one thing. Oh. <laughs> a little showmanship to go along with us as everybody jumps around. <laughs> nice. you got to have the trumpet bring in jump around, Bryce. That, that's how you do it. That's exactly in, how you do it. In West Texas. Buffaloes lead this one 35 to 3, 279 yards through three quarters of play to 176 for the Buffaloes. 128 of that passing, 151 yards on the ground for the Buffs. What a difference a week makes. Buffs with a second down and long play. Ariola throws, catch made by the Max truck there, Maxwell Perez. Right at the stick. Yeah, just his third catch of the season. That's good enough to move the chains. First down, Buffaloes. He uh, came in three years ago, recruited as a quarterback. They quickly made him uh, kind of a specialty player, yeah. fullback into a tight end. And a tough player, good leader for the Buffaloes over the last several seasons. On first down, Areola play action. Throw has a receiver down there, incomplete. Uh, just needed one second, maybe. One more, you're right. Oh, my land, he had that. That was good timing, trying to get it up the field. Just couldn't get it completed. Tyree Tipton was the receiver that Areola was trying to connect with. Caleb is also a senior, so both quarterbacks for WT uh, on the roster, Gerber, and uh, Ariola, upperclassman, Ariola, senior out of Chino, California. Uh, not much uh, action this season, but he, getting in here, that's good yeah, to see. You're going to get to play this fourth quarter. <laughs> Hand off over the left side, and that play was read from the get go as Central Washington stops Okoye. Give the tackle to number 99, Isaiah Carbajal. 
And then we get our third quarter stats. We'll go through some of these here just in a little bit. But again, Buffs, as we're in the fourth quarter now, controlling this one, 35 to three. Third down and 10. Jared Compton back in at running back for WT. Ariola will come up, change the play. Play clock down to five seconds. Central Washington ran a twist defensively with that line, and it really messed up WT's blocking scheme there and results in a big sack. They're going to throw the uh, quarterback Areola all the way back to the 16-yard line. Yeah, he kind of saw it. He tried to step to his left, but again, they had already came in and were able to kind of grab him, and, and uh, he goes over quickly, talks with Russ Martin there on the sideline. Russ is kind of, you know, going... You know, let, let's let's take a look at that play. We probably want to change that up a little bit. The Wildcats came into this game tonight, Bryce, 26 points a game, 367 total yards per game. And the offense did not travel tonight as they have struggled throughout this ball game. The punt will go just on the other side of midfield and be down at and, the Wildcats' 49-yard line. And with the wind the way it is, that was really a nice punt from area, or from um, – Ali Art. Ali Art to get that up the field. It gives them great field position, but again, he did a nice job because he's trying to keep it low, and so it will travel a little bit up the field. Looking at uh, those updated stats, 176. That's the total yards for Central Washington. WT hasn't uh, exploded. I mean, they've got 277 total yards of offense, but what WT has done, they've been very balanced. And that's a key in this ball game tonight. Lemming on first down, out of the gun. Fakes it to Henderson. Deep throw down the far sideline. And it went through the hands of a receiver. I, they have had a lot. Uh, Bryce, I'm, I mean, I'm not kidding. Close to 10, 10 drops today. Yeah. I mean, they're not helping their quarterbacks out whatsoever. And again, um, you know, as far as Quincy Glasper is concerned, and that, I think they were getting him out there just to see what kind of shape he was in. Could he play a little bit? But again, he had two or three drops. He was two of eight. Quick throw to Henderson, and there's another drop. This one from the running back. And they're, yeah, they're going to whistle it dead. It almost looked like a lateral. I think there's been a song or two written with the lyrics, just one of those days. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I feel like for Chris Fisk, that's kind of what he's feeling right now. Head coach of Central Washington, just this is not in sync today. Third down and 10 play here. Clock 1248 to play in the ballgame. Buffs bringing pressure. As Sugg comes from the outside, they bring the safety as well. The throw over the top, incomplete. And that, that has been uh, any time the Buffs have gotten pressure through yeah. or, or an extra uh, defender is left unblocked, it's been an incomplete pass. Yeah, because they're throwing it. They're just trying to throw to a spot on the field, hoping the receiver will get up there. And the Buffs did a nice job putting pressure on the quarterback, forcing another punt here with 12.43 left to play. Again, the Buffs in front in this one, 35 to 3. Tyler Sweet will go back to return another punt. And a busy evening for Daniel Stewart, the punter for Central Washington. And Sweet's going to field it from the seven-yard line. Shake and bake, baby. And uh, he gets across the 15. A penalty marker, though, thrown back at the six-yard line. This could be hold, could block be a block in the, in the back. back. Yeah, it's probably a block in the back. And so they'll bring this one back. And so this will be against the Buffaloes. But again, nice return by Sweet. And he's the one that kind of ignited everything tonight with a kickoff return of 91 yards. Okay, we've got a media timeout. We'll step aside. During the Buffs return, lead, illegal block in the back, three. number 16 of the return team. As they tell the uh, give us Penalty the ball, block in the back against West Te Texas A&M. We'll step aside, be back with goal. football. First down, these messages, Texas. Here from Bain Schaefer, Buffalo Timeout, 90 second, media timeout.
and get your questions answered and find out about our price matching online today. Well, welcome back to Bain Schaefer Stadium. We'll look at our statistics so far in the ballgame. 35-3 is our score. 151 yards rushing for the Buffs to 74 for the Central Washington. 128 through the air, 102 for Central Washington. Turnovers is a big one, too. Two for Central Washington. That's kind of been what the Buffs have feasted on a little bit here tonight. Blocking the back, uh, backs the Buffaloes up. Yeah, they run it with Compton just to get a little bit of room. He doesn't pick up much at all. As Central Washington does a good job there, the defensive line. You know, they made plays in the first half. It was 14-0, it seemed like, for a long stretch, and the Wildcats' offense just never <coughs> responded. They didn't get that, that spark they needed, right. and uh, WT definitely take, took advantage as the game went on. Areola's going to throw. Good fake. Now he's going to run at the five-yard line out Keep of bounds. Going. Yeah, yeah, nice job. Nice run by Caleb. Picks up the first. Yeah. No, not close. quite. Uh, I thought he was close. I thought he got it. He well, did. Yeah, he did pick up the first down. Okay. <laughs> Officials <laughs> couldn't couldn't make up. I, well, I couldn't their mind tell where they were going to spot I, it. I couldn't tell either. So, but again, nice run. Avoided the pressure and keeps the drive alive for the Buffs. Compton runs into a wall. Good. The and the Buffs are going to run it a lot because they just want to chew up clock now, leading this one. 35 to 3. Christian Penny, and then uh, he gets some help as well from Josiah Cochran. You know, you talked about their defensive line, how big they are. I mean, they, they have a good sized defensive line, but the Buffs have been able to keep them off balance tonight, and that's been the advantage. Second down and 11 coming up here for Areola. A good arm uh, for the backup quarterback. He can throw it. He's got three receivers split out to the far side. They'll stay on the ground, though, and keep the clock running. Only a yard gained there by Compton. Another good tackle by Christian Penny, a 315-pound senior defensive tackle. As you look at uh, the roster for Central Washington, they do have uh, a plethora of talented seniors. Yeah, they do. And, again, senior laden team, again, in the playoffs last year. They were 8-3 and three last season. So, again, they kind of know what it takes. But the Buffalo is really feeling good here tonight. Third down and nine. Areola will turn and look to the side. A different play call in. Steps back and looks to throw in trouble, being chased, and he's taken down. The Wildcats brought a blitz, and the Buffaloes did not pick it up that time. The sack will be credited to number 35, Kai Gamble, for Central Washington. They throw the quarterback back to the 10-yard line, and Buffs have to punt it back to the Wildcats. One thing it does, though, obviously with a running play, it keeps the clock running. Ariola goes back right over to Russ Martin again. He says, hey, that, there was a couple there that, you know, didn't work the way we needed them to. So Ollie Art, the punter for West Texas A&M, will send it back to the new return man, Marcus Cook, will go back and field this one. Movement. There's movement. Yeah, yeah they're going to whistle that dead because there was movement. Offsides yeah, against Central, Central Washington. Washington. Yeah. Number two came across quickly. In fact, before the ball was snapped. Offside. Yeah, Perkins just got a Number two of the defense, five-yard penalty remains fourth down. Kaufman before the ball was snapped. 35-3 the score. West Texas A&M leading 9-30 to play here in the fourth quarter. Buffs cruising and uh, looking like they're going to pick up win number five. They'll improve to 3-3 uh, three and three in Lone Star Conference play and will take over third place in uh, the conference. Right, right. That's the important thing right there. Wildcats bring pressure. Ollie Art gets it off. Cook will field it just on the other side of the 50-yard line. Runs into his own man, reverses field. 
and then steps out of bounds after a good athletic return. Nine minutes, one second left to play in this one. Buffs lead it. Good field position for Central Washington. We would uh, like to recognize Lions Realty as a proud partner of WT Athletics. Give them a call at 806-358-3900. Lions Realty. Timeout. 90 seconds. Media timeout. Athletics. Also, Medi Drive Pharmacy. Plus Texas A&M Athletics. Uh, thanks Medi Drive Pharmacy for their support of our athletes. Located on 23rd Street, Medi Drive can assist with all of your pharmaceutical needs. Medi Drive, the official pharmacy of WT Athletics and also Texas Farm Bureau, uh, sponsor for West Texas A&M, Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. WT <laughs> thanks them for all their continued support as uh, we have a dance off here. Texas Farm Bureau members receive free tickets to all WT home sporting events. Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, a proud sponsor of the Buffaloes. And Bryce, we know that uh, they call this the floss. <laughs> the floss off, yes. Okay. This is the floss off. Don't forget to floss kids. There's Spider-Man. Yeah. Not your Spider-Man. Is that my kid? No, I'm not I don't sure. think so. Okay. Yeah, there's some people that are just, that's just move, have some fun. And, of course, the crowd is having fun tonight with this 35-3 lead, exactly what they hope to have out here tonight with the Buffaloes. And so, Buffs again, 284 yards total offense. 176 for Central Washington. And so, again, good field position for Central Washington to try to see if they can get something going here. It, it, it has been one of those games where, as a Buff fan, Bryce, uh, you, you're up here and you're going, man, how did we lose last week? <laughs> we look so good tonight. Here's Lemming. He'll throw, has a receiver wide open, and he overthrew. Or that could have been a touchdown yeah, to Lemmy, DeMonte Horton. Lemmy had such a good week last week. So my question is, is it the wind that's affecting him? Because his passes are really kind of all over the place. Yeah. And so is it the conditions? Is it, you know, what, what is it that's kind of throwing him off here a little bit? Yeah, this time the Lone Star State has not been kind to uh, the Wildcats. Snap was low. Lemming hit as he threw, and then it was nearly intercepted as Freddie Simmons came up, made a beat on the ball, and nearly got himself an interception. Man, he, he read it perfectly. He, had the, he read the lane and came up to try to come up with the interception. And again, of course, you know that for Central Washington, they just want to throw the football. They got to get something going positive and get it up the field. Lemming steps up, throws. Good catch on the outside. Fighting to try to pick up the first down was Marcus Cook, and I think he is just short. Yeah, yard short. So they'll bring up fourth and one. They'll go for it. I don't think with this one, with the size of your quarterback, you just quarterback keep it and just take it up the middle. They set the tight end, Glazer, to the left. Kind of in that wing spot. And give it to Henderson. And Henderson oh, shoots through. And that, big, that is the run they've been waiting for, yeah, Bryce. Touchdown, Wildcats. First biggest run of the night. Henderson finally gets something going there. And is able to take that up the middle. Longest run of the night for uh, the Wildcats right there. Yeah, before that one, he had 32 yards on 18 carries. And so able to get that one in. A 31-yard run. He, he well, That one run was almost as long as his whole night. Extra point coming here from Jude Millett. The snap was off a little bit. Good hold from the quarterback, Lemming. And they tack on one more point. The score is now 35-10. West Texas A&M still leading comfortably. 8-13 to play in the ballgame. We'll step aside, come back with the kickoff here from Bain Schaefer Buffalo Stadium right after this.
Well, welcome back to Bain Schaefer Stadium as Central Washington goes on a four-play, 40-yard drive. Last 31 of that was Henderson taking that in right up the middle, his biggest run of the night. And for him right now, that gives him, I should say, 19 carries and 63 yards. Uh, offense for him on the ground tonight, but well short of where he has been all season long with over 100 yards per ball game. Western New Mexico, Bryce, only a score that we weren't sure of. They are defeating Simon Frazier uh, late in the game, 31 to nothing. That is the Buffs' next opponent. So right. WT makes the long trek across the state of New Mexico to Silver City to take on the Mustangs. And that's a much improved team, too. Western yes. uh, New Mexico has really done a nice job as far as recruiting is concerned. Central Washington going to attempt the onside kick. It's a good one. Bounced backwards right where they needed it to, but Maxwell Perez covers it. <laughs> it hits him, bounces off of him forward, and then he just dives on it, does a nice job. There is a flag right at the 36-yard line. It's got to be offsides on the kicking team. So they're just going to assess it. Should just assess it at the end of the play. Coach Hughes talking to the field judge down there as the referee and back judge have the conversation to make the correct call. So that was WT's upcoming game, Central uh, Washington. We'll go back home, and they'll take on Texas A&M Kingsville next week, 8 o'clock kickoff there in Washington. And again, Kingsville coming off, uh, having a tough time right now with Angelo State. So they know, too, for Kingsville. There is no foul for legal formation on the kickoff. I would be placed at the recovery spot. First down, West Texas. Illegal formation. And so, and I think what they're talking about, they only had three guys on the far side of the kicker. And so I thought that you were supposed to keep that even now, but I could be off on, is that high school, college, or pros? Not sure. Areola will hand it off to Brian Okoye, who they have uh, done a better job against him as the game has gone on. But it's pretty vanilla what the Buffs are running right now. Correct. So this is called run the clock. It's exactly right. They're going to run it up the middle and just let him, you know, if he gets some, great. If not, it's okay, too. Under eight minutes left here in the fourth quarter. A 25-point lead for West Texas A&M in front of the home fans. Okoye, again, not uh, able to get just a yard or two. Good defense for the Wildcats. Akamas, the linebacker, and also Patrick Rogers. Look defen uh, defensively for Central Washington. Leading tackler, uh, some of the defensive uh, secondary players. Jaleel Breland, 10 tackles. Volk has eight tackle, uh, tackles, Akamas with eight, and then Dayon Hudson with six. And that's really a nice job because Hudson is their emotional leader. And really, if you've been able to kind of contain him with blocking tonight, that's a good, good sign as well. Third down and nine here for the Buffaloes. Areola, the lefty, will throw. He will escape pressure. That's a face mask that they throw against the Wildcats, and that's unfortunate for Central Washington because they stop Areola, a couple yards behind the line of scrimmage, but it's not going to matter. It's a first down buffs. Personal foul, face mask, number 92 of the defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic he first down. Didn't mean to. That was yeah. Sean Gordon uh, yeah. kind of putting his hands, uh, his helmet down and saying, oh, I just reached out, trying to grab a jersey and uh, grabbed a hold of the face mask. So that keeps the drive alive. The buffs will take some more time off the clock. And again, Areola, that time, he got away from pressure rolled out to the near side, and he should have just kept running, but he wanted to throw it again instead of just keep, keep, moving, the, keep moving forward. Buffs let the play clock run down before they get the play sent in. And they better hurry because it's running down quickly. Just barely got it off. Okoye up the middle, runs over a defender, and picks up right at about 10, 11 yards. That's enough for a first down. It is just like the way that number 32 <laughs> runs, Bryce. Yeah. Again, he, he goes off the left side of the line that time, and following the blocking of Adam Alcorta and Zach Dietrich, 
And so then just to open the hole, and then he sees a defender, so he doesn't run around him. He runs right at him to run over him. Give the bus another first down. Clock continues to run. Ariola keeps it, throws on the run, incomplete, intended for Tyshawn Buckner on the uh, outside. Good coverage by the Wildcats secondary. He had Tyshawn going to the inside that time, and he was trying to break free to the outside. And that I think there was a little miscommunication between the receiver and Ariola on that one because he wanted Caleb wanted to go to the outside on that one, and Tyshawn was breaking toward the inside. One thing you don't like about an incomplete pass is it stops the clock. This is Okoye running hard again, dragging Wildcat defenders all the way down close to the five-yard line. He will not go down. And because of that nice run, Jared Compton's going to come in and give him a breather because he was in the, you know, vice grip there that time mm -hmm. by both his offensive line and the defensive line trying to push the other way. So third down and about three. They can still get a first down without getting in the end zone. All we'll rest at the six-yard line. Clock under five minutes left to play. Just got the text from KJ down the sideline. 6,000 plus in attendance tonight. Jared Compton takes it over the right side. And I think he picks up the first down. He okay, does. so first and goal now yeah. for the Buffs yeah. with 440 to play. They're going to have a chance uh, to tack on another touchdown. And, you know, considering, I mean, Bryce, we were talking about it throughout the week. We, Central Washington is a tough opponent, yes. and WT yes. is just throttling them here tonight. And, and the thing is, they came in, as you talked about, knowing what their playoff configuration would be, but they needed to win tonight in order to get to the Kingsville, to get to the Angelo game. And tonight the Buffs have just put it on them. Compton tries the right side, loses the ball. It comes out, and Central Washington is bringing this back at the 40-yard line. 30 just taken down. Great hustle by the Buffs. Tyree Tipton to come and track the defender down. That was a wild play where Dayon Hudson, Bryce, is the player for Central Washington that all of a sudden just rips the ball out from yeah, Compton yeah. and is, is racing down the sideline. Wow. So it gives them a bit of a... You know, confidence boost or a surge of adrenaline here. And he's still holding on to the football over there as he goes over on the far sideline. But a, a nice touchdown saving tackle yeah. by Tyree. And then now you force Central to use clock here. The Wildcats with three timeouts. Not much time to work with, though. 354 it was a first turnover forced for Central Washington, throw across the middle, high, incomplete. Again, I just, it just seems that Lemming is having a hard time getting comfortable Second throwing game. the football here at Bain Schaefer Stadium. He's 11 of 31 on the evening, 92 yards. Snap back to the quarterback, Lemming. Sidesteps, throws, catch made, close to the first down marker. That one's going to be Marcus Cook. Yeah, they're going to give him a good spot on that one. They'll move the chains. Timeout, injury timeout. One of the Wildcat players slow to get up and his quarterback checking on him. And that's not a first down. I thought it was they were moving the chains, but instead it'll be just third short. And one. Yeah, just short. Rayburn Rentals, one of our sponsors, proudly served the Emerald area for over 30 years. WT Athletics wants to recognize Rayburn Rentals for their continued support of all of our athletes and also Mickey's Place. We want to recognize Mickey's Place for their support, uh, being a sponsor for WT Athletics. They're located on the square in Canyon. Mickey's Place provides a modern twist on traditional Italian cuisine along with non-Italian favorites. And... Uh, Bryce, what is your favorite Italian dish? There's so many of them, and I love Italian food. What are you going to go with? Well, that's a good question. Does pizza count? It does count, <laughs> absolutely. 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right? I, I mean, I do like, you know, there's some that I really like a lot, obviously, but. Uh, um, <laughs> you, you lasagna guy, spaghetti with meatballs. I'm you, really you, want, more you want the chicken parmesan. I'm really more of a uh, Alfredo guy. Really. Okay. So, you know, chicken Alfredo, something along that line. Should have so, known you're an Alfredo so, guy. Yeah. <laughs> I like the red sauce. <laughs> I mean, I like spaghetti. And, and it, too, I mean, I'm, I'm, actually, my wife makes a wonderful spaghetti, and so I like it. Can so. you tell we're hungry? Right? We had, we had a great meal before, before pregame, but <laughs> this fourth quarter has kind of gone a little long here. The, the injured player is, is okay. Yeah, he walks uh, off. Noah Thompson, he's okay for the Wildcats, so they get a sub in. And the Wildcats on the field with a third down and one. The clock winds, 328 and counting here in the fourth quarter. Buffs lead it by 25 points. Hand off to Henderson. Tough run. He got the first down. Yeah, he's determined, though. He's going to get in the end zone again. And so he he just wants to get that football take off and just run up the middle. So they're going to go quick. Lemming will hand it again to Henderson. And he gets a little bit. Maybe to the five. Yeah, that's about it. And again, it's it's second and goal to go. So um, we'll shuttle some people in. But again, the clock is working against them right now. Surprised they're not going with you know just a quick pass yeah. on the outside, yeah. or they're, they're not in a hurry. No. And I really anticipate this will be another give to Henderson. And there's the touchdown for the Wildcats. Another one for Trajan Henderson as he plunges forward. And uh, with some help from the defense, obviously getting that uh, strip and return deep down into Buffs territory, it is now 35-16, a chance to cut it to 35-17. As Millette will come on. Buffs jump off sides. The snap goes over the head of the holder, but hold on. This could be off sides, and Central could get another opportunity. I think that's one where the center and saw the Buffs jump. Offside. Number three of the defense. Half the distance to the goal. We'll replay the try. So they're going to change out, bring the offense back on to go for two. Well, Okay, this, they'll change it up. Don't feel bad, though, if you're the, the long snapper there for Central Washington because, Bryce, today uh, Weber State had four long snaps on punts, went over oh the my. punter's head, resulting in oh. safeties. That's tough. That's a bad day. That's a tough day. See, anybody still watching the broadcast out there saying you had a bad day? No, you didn't. <laughs> the punter from Weber, or the snapper at Weber State did. Here's the two-point conversion. Lemming turns, hands it to Cameron Daniels. Daniels will not get in. The Buffs stop him. Great job. I think that was Cade Cox. Uh, no, it was, yeah, it was Cade Cox, the linebacker, the fr redshirt freshman from Dumas that came up and made the stop. We'll take a quick timeout, come back. Buffs leading 35-16, 2.26 to play in the ballgame. Since 1933, the Panhandle Plains Historical Museum has housed the vast history of Panhandle Plains, given back to the community, and provided educational resources to those who live here. Located on the campus of West Texas A&M University, PPHM is free to all students, faculty, and staff at WT. We offer volunteer opportunities, internships, and hands-on research experience. From prehistoric times to pioneer travels, there's something for everyone at the largest history museum in Texas. Stop by and see us sometime. Oh, and don't forget, go Buffs! Well, welcome back to Bay Shaver Stadium as Henderson's able to get in the end zone again on a five-yard run to cut the lead to 35-16. The try for two is no good. Here's the onside attempt. High in the air. Central Washington still losing it. I think it went out of bounds. 
two different Wildcat players had a chance to haul that in, Bryce. And again, we went said it earlier in the, the broadcast, not the evening uh, for the Wildcats. No. And that tells you right there, a chance for the onside recovery and just couldn't get it. Yeah, again, it took the right hop that the kicker wanted it to take, but the Buffs able to knock it out of bounds, actually. And so they'll take over there. Central Washington still with three timeouts remaining. And just a little bit, Bryce, I'm going to head downstairs and get you ready bet. for uh, the postgame interviews, get a chance to visit with head coach Hunter Hughes. And I think we're trying to line up Chris Thomas, the uh, senior linebacker for the Buffaloes right now. Kyle Brown coming out to be the quarterback. Okay, first action we've seen for Kyle this season. Hand off to Okoye, running hard over the left side. Brian's going to pick up yardage to the 50. So for the Buffaloes, Kyle Brown... Redshirt freshman, 6'1", 185-pounder out of Cedar Park, Texas. High school ball at Vista Ridge High School. Yeah. And a good uh, opportunity for him to get in. I'm going to let you take this one over, partner. All right, very good. So Kyle Brown stay out as they get the play sent in. And, again, they're just trying to run the clock down here as much as they can. Brown walks up to the line, lets everybody know what the snap will be. And they'll snap it with about one or two left on the play clock. Two wideouts to the left. Brown will give it off. Again, Okoye up the middle, and he'll get close to the 46-yard line. Be about two yards short of the first down. So it'll bring up third and two for the Buffaloes. Clock continues to run. 125 left to play. Buffs lead at 35-16. Again, Buffs will improve to 5-3 and three on the year. Bring in some offensive line help. Twelve seconds on the play clock. So Brown again in the shotgun gives it off, and that time Central Washington overloaded, able to come in for a loss, and Central Washington calls the timeout. And so that'll stop the clock with 45 seconds left to play. Timeout, Central the Washington. Game. Their first of the half. 30 second timeout. Please reset the, the game clock to 51 seconds. 51 here. seconds. Uh, in the last couple of series where they've had the football. And 237 for Central Washington. And again, Washington with 117 yards rushing. Um, not bad overall for the team, but the thing is, is um, as they try to get it, uh, Tejon, uh, Trajan Henderson has 75 yards of that, and two of the last two runs have been 36 of those 75 yards on touchdown runs. So that brings up fourth down and long for the Buffaloes. They'll punt this one away. As Ali Yart. We'll drop back to put his foot into this one. 51 seconds left to play in the ball game. Buffs will come out and prove to five and three on this season. And before that, we have a timeout taken. Timeout, West Texas A&M, their first of the half. 30 second timeout. Things over. They were looking at the coverage there a little bit. For Central Washington, they'll fall to four and three and four and two in LSC play. While for the Buffaloes, they will improve to 3-3 three and three in LSC play. As we kind of take a look again at the Lone Star Conference scoreboard here tonight. As again, the Buffs come out to put this in play. And so now I'll yard back to try to punt this one away. Fourth down and about six for the Buffs. Quick kick, yard gets it away. That one is going to be returned. We're on the far side of the field, trying to maneuver, but just nowhere to go for Marcus Cook. Marcus Cook returning. So Buffs kind of gang tackle him here. That's what the Buffs called the timeout for, is they wanted to make sure they had their return coverage set and ready to go. And so they did. And so with 40 seconds left, 
Central Washington will bring out their offense, trailing 35-16. J.J. Lemming in the shotgun. Has Henderson to his left. Two wide out split on either side. Back to pass. Lemming now will take off and run. Nope, throws it up the middle. That's going to be knocked away. Trying to get it up ahead to Zach Matlock. And Matlock had that knocked away. That took five seconds off the clock. Brings up second down and 10. Lemming trying to go quickly. Has to wait for his receiver to get reset. Haven't started the play clock yet. Running back to pass. Has time, comes over the middle. Has a receiver that's caught and taken out of bounds. And again, that's Zach Matlock who picks up the first down as that's marked up to the 44-yard line. So if nothing else, Central Washington is going to help their statistics on this one as... Lemming able to get over 100 yards passing now with that completion. 28 seconds left to play. First and 10. Low snap. Pressure applied. And rolling out, going up the field. That is tipped up and knocked out of bounds and had the underlying defender there who almost was able to come up and tip that one away. That was Jackson, the Marion Jackson, who kind of came up and Kind of had a read on it. Let's check it, it's Braylon Suggs. Had his jersey kind of rolled up. So Braylon Suggs almost comes up with the interception. Second down and 10. Pressure applied over the middle. That pass is behind the intended receiver. He was going up, a, up an in route. And his quarterback just kind of threw that one on an out route. Third down. And so that brings up third and 10 with 16 seconds left to play. Puts Lemming at 13 of 35 passing, 126 yards in this ball game. Play clock down to 19. Three man rush for the buffs to bring the linebacker up. And there's gonna be a flag and there's gonna be movement. Procedure penalty and that'll be called on the left tackle for False start, number 76 of the offense, five-yard penalty, remains third down. It's on Axel Isaacson. So they more five yards off, now make it third and 15 for Central Washington. 14 seconds left to play in the ball game. That's going to be thrown way out of bounds, not even close to a receiver. Not even sure who Lemming, he had a receiver way up ahead of that pass. I don't know if he thought he was going to break, cut off his route and break on an out route or, but nevertheless, that one was not ever close to anyone in particular. It brings a fourth down and 15 with nine seconds left. So two wide outs to the right, two to the near side. They're on the near hash. Now they bring the tight end back in. Send a receiver to the far side of the field. So one on the near side, two on the far side, and a tight end. And back to pass. That's going to go over the tight end and through his hands and out of bounds. And that'll be an incomplete pass. So the Buffs will bring out the offense for one last snap as they're going to win this one by a final of 35 to 16. Fourth down stop for your Buff defense. And so coming out to. Get this will be Kyle Brown as he will be in the victory formation for the Buffs. So Brown gets set. One more snap, and that'll be the ball game. He has it, takes a knee. And so that will be the ball game as the Buffaloes win this one by a final of 35 to 16. Nice win for the Buffaloes again as they improved to five and three on the season. And more importantly, they have won now four in a row over Central Washington. And they've won both encounters here of late here at uh, in Canyon at uh, Bain Schaefer Stadium. But again, the final 35-16 in favor of West Texas a and We'll take a timeout, we'll do so, and come back and get into our post-game show. But first this break on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. 
Come West is the comprehensive fundraising campaign designed to fuel WT125 from the Panhandle to the world. We will strengthen WT's impact for the Panhandle region and beyond through a historic, comprehensive campaign, raising $125 million by 2025. The campaign's three priorities, people, programs, and places. Now is the time to make a difference for current and future generations. One West. Welcome to Shimon Dental Group, where every day we're excited to see our patients and treat them like family. We are dedicated to providing you with the highest quality care in a friendly and comfortable environment. Shimon Dental Group's patient-focused philosophy puts your needs front and center. We are constantly investing in leading-edge technology, innovations that speed the treatment process and improve aesthetics. We're expanding the breadth of our cosmetic and restorative services through training to provide the best possible outcomes. Just with the level of commitment that they show to taking care of my family and I, it's absolutely unmatched in this town, so I've been very happy with them. Brightening smiles for more than three decades. Contact Shim and Dylan Group for your appointment today. Not much there. Buffs. The best tailgates start with the best beef. And the best beef starts with Market Street. Market Street, where we do beef the best. Well, welcome back to Bain Schaefer Stadium as the Buffs win this one by a count of 35-16. Let's head down to the field. Luke Kinsey has a happy Hunter Hughes on the sideline. Luke? Well, welcome back to Bain Schaefer Buffalo Stadium. The Buffaloes wrap up a big win at home tonight over a tough Central Washington team. Head coach Hunter Hughes joining me now. Coach win 35-16. It was never in doubt really from the beginning of this game. And your team had quite a response tonight. You had a tough lo uh, loss on the road last week against Western Oregon. But you just came out tonight and really took it to Central Washington. Talk about your team's effort tonight. Uh, I think uh, we challenged them to compete and have some pride about themselves. Uh, starts interest to them and you know themselves having pride and then going resonate throughout the rest of the team. So uh, I was very, very proud of the way they competed, started out, came out hot, um, and it just goes to show that uh, you know traveling I mean, that team's better than they show. They're a lot better than travel. It affects you a little bit. And I said that last week about us, and you know we're going to have to learn how to travel uh, in order to be. You know, to play like this every week, and that's what we got to do. Did you see this coming throughout the week in practice, though? I mean, did you see your team preparing uh, well and, and really feeling like they would come out, come out and have this response? No, I thought uh, I thought defensively um, they would try to go 12 personnel and try to run it down our throats, uh, which they did a little bit. So, um, but we were ready for it. And I, I, you know, I don't know what they had rushing wise, but uh, um, I thought our defensive front, uh, front seven, played really well and. You know, he gets started with a big kickoff return, and you know, Sion gets the pick, you know, first play of the game, and kind of gets us going, and uh, got a little momentum, and got some excitement going on the sidelines, and that's what we've missed. So uh, it's good to be here. I mean, the crowd is is incredible here, the way they respond, and uh, it lifts our guys up. Talk about your young players. We've had a lot of injuries as the season has gone on, but I mean, offensively, guys like Brian Okoye on the defensive end, you can just name a host of players that have stepped up and made big plays for this team. Sign Shuva had an interception tonight. What does that tell you about your team as they fought throughout this season? Well, we've played anywhere on defense from five to seven starters out that started the first game for us. So, uh, you know, I see improvement week to week um, from those young guys. Uh, you got to, uh, you got to expect them to make some mistakes. I mean, that's going to happen with the young guys and they're playing their you know, first year of college football. So um, I think the biggest thing is, um, you know, we came together and played. Our offense played well. Nick responded the way I hope he responded. Our offensive line responded against a good front. And, um, you know, Brian Okoye ran the ball well. You know, I'm disappointed and I'm disappointed for Jared uh, with the fumble. Um, you know, but he's got to protect the ball in that situation. So um, he'll learn from it and he'll bounce back. Five and three next week on the road, Western New Mexico. Talk about that game and uh, your team still fighting to, to finish strong here. Uh, we just want to win the next game. You know, uh, we don't talk about what's ahead. Uh, we just talk about getting better every week, and uh, we accomplish that this week. Great job tonight, Coach. Thank you. 
All right, head coach Hunter Hughes joining me, and uh, we'll uh, take a we'll take a timeout. Come back, see if we've got any players. If not, we'll go back upstairs to you, Bryce. This is a walk-on athlete. They train long, and put their heart into the game. This is the passion we're built on. It's why we put our heart into creating game day for the taste of Louisiana. Walk on. We live for this. Since 1910, WT and the Department of Agricultural Sciences has provided high quality education to the students of the Panhandle and beyond. At WT, professors know me and are committed to my success. If you want to get an ag industry job, WT is where you need to be. I don't want just a job and a paycheck after graduation. I want a career where I can make a difference. WT invested in my career. I intend to pay it forward. Well, welcome back to Bain Schaefer Stadium. Again, you heard Coach Hughes and Lucas Kinsey talking about tonight's win for the Buffaloes. They win this one 35-16 as we look at our final stats of the evening. 165 yards on the ground for the Buffs to 117 for Central Washington. 145 yards through the air. Central Washington had to pass a lot toward the end. 136 for the Buffaloes tonight. 301 total yards of offense for WT. 262 for Central Washington. Turnovers. Only uh, two for Central Washington, but they were early, and they were difference makers in this one tonight to one for the um, uh, for the Buffaloes tonight. Then time of possession, 31-44 in favor of the Buffs to 28-16 in this one this evening. And I think the thing that stands out a little bit for this one this evening for the Buffaloes, they rushed 57 times for that 165 yards tonight. Compare that to last week where they threw for 51 passes in the ball game. They only threw for 13 to 22 tonight. And again, total 79 offensive plays for 301 yards. To, uh, after Central Washington had more offensive or almost as much, 76 for 262. But that was the big difference in this one tonight. And a big win tonight for the Buffaloes. And they improved 5-3 and three on the season and get ready to Hit the road as they will go over to Western New Mexico next Saturday for that contest before coming back here on November 5th as they will take on Eastern New Mexico. And so, again, three games left for the Buffaloes. They'll have that one. And then, of course, Simon Frazier will be the last one on the road as well. But, again, setting up nicely for the Buffaloes to cap off this season with a win tonight. We want to thank, obviously, our Thunder Vision crew for this one tonight. Jacob Griffiths for directing this one. And again, all the cameras that are out there this evening bringing the great shots uh, of everything that took place. And the entire crew were able to bring you the pictures and excitement of this 35-16 win. We're going to wrap up tonight with our Marble Depot big hit of the ball game tonight. That'll do it here from Bain Schaefer Stadium. The Buffs win this one by a final of 35-16 for Lucas Kinsey. I'm Bryce Sheets. Have a great evening. This is the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. <laughs>